Item Number SCP-914 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Only personnel who submit a formal request and receive approval from Site Command may operate 914. SCP-914 is to be kept in Research Cell 109B with two guard personnel on duty at all times. Any researchers entering 109B are to be accompanied by at least one guard for the entirety of testing. A full list of tests to be carried out must be given to all guard personnel on duty. Any deviation from this list will result in termination of testing, forcible removal of personnel from 109B, and formal discipline at Site Command's discretion. Warning, at this time, no testing of biological matter is allowed. Refer to Document 109-B-117. Applying the rough setting to explosive materials is not advised. Description: SCP-914 is a large clockwork device, weighing several tons and covering an area of 18 square meters, consisting of screwdrives, belts, pulleys, gears, springs, and other clockwork. It is incredibly complex, consisting of over 8 million moving parts comprised mostly of tin and copper, with some wooden and cloth items observed. Observation and probing have showed no electronic assemblies of any form of power other than the mainspring under the selection panel. Two large booths, 3 meters by 2.1 meters by 2.1 meters, 10 feet by 7 feet by 7 feet, are connected via copper tubes to the main body of SCP-914, labeled intake and output. Between them is a copper panel with a large knob with a small arrow attached. The words rough, coarse, 1-1 one -one ratio, fine, and very fine are positioned at points around the knob. Below the knob is a large key that winds the mainspring. When an object is placed in the intake booth, a door slides shut and a small bell sounds. If the knob is turned to any position and the key wound up, SCP-914 will refine the object in the booth. No energy is lost in the process, and the object appears to be in stasis until the output booth door is opened. Intense observation and testing have not shown how SCP-914 accomplishes this, and no test object has ever been observed inside SCP-914 during the refining process. The process takes between 5 and 10 minutes depending on the size of the object being refined. Addendum 5-14 Dr. B Test Log Input 1 kg of steel Setting Rough Output Pile of steel chunks of various sizes, appearing to be cut by laser. Input 1 kg of steel Setting 1-1 one -one ratio Output 1 kg of steel screws Input 1 kg of steel, setting, fine. Output 1 kg of steel carpet tacks. Input 1 kg of steel, setting, very fine. Output Several gases that dissipated into the air quickly, and 1 gram of an unknown metal, resistant to heat of 50,000 degrees, impossible to bend or break with any force, and a near perfect. 1.6 by 10 minus 75 p conductor of electricity. Input: One wristwatch belonging to Doctor. Setting course. Output: One completely disassembled wristwatch. Input: One cell phone belonging to. Setting one one. Output: One cell phone, although different make and model. Input: One standard Colt Python revolver. Setting. Very fine. Output Aforementioned Completely disintegrated all matter in its line of fire. Object contained with high-density gamma waves. Input One white mouse. Setting 1-1 one -one. Output One brown mouse. Input One chimp. Setting Fine. Output Input One chimp. Setting Rough Output Badly mutilated corpse, showing signs of crushing and cutting with high heat. Document number 109B117 Dr. B 
and Dr. B test log. Input: Subject D186, male Caucasian, 42 years old, 108 kg, 185 cm tall. Setting: 1-1. Output: Male Hispanic, 42 years old, 100 kg, 188 cm tall. Subject was very confused and agitated. Subject attacked security personnel. Subject terminated. Input: Subject D-187, male Caucasian, 28 years old, 63 kg, 173 cm tall. Setting: Very fine. Output: Subject escaped from test chamber, killing eight guards as well as Dr. B and Dr. B Lockdown initiated. Subject causes containment failure of three SCP areas in continued escape attempt. Special response team engages subject, resulting in severe wounding of subject, partial memory loss in special response team members, and corrosive damage to plumbing. Subject expired several hours later, dissolving into blue ash and blinding nearby research team. Biological testing with SCP-914 discontinued. Note, because of the nature of this SCP, a wide range of test data would be helpful. Dr. Gears has ordered that any researcher can have access for non-biological testing if they themselves are or they are supervised by a Level 3 researcher. All testing is to be recorded in File Number 914E, Experiment Log 914. Biological testing will continue only with prior clearance by O5 Command. As long as you want to try something mundane that isn't alive, feel free to help accumulate data. Dr. Site 19 Facility 23 Dossier Basic Information Founded December 12, 1988 Location USA Cover Story Government Warehouse Function SCP-914 Containment and Research Anomalous Item Containment Size Area of 0.025 Square Kilometers Personnel Facility Director Dr. Arthur Hackett Director of Research Dr. Lucius Veritas Director of Containment Dr. Marissa Norwood Security Chief Agent Alan Sedna Administrative Personnel 18 Maintenance Personnel 21 Research Personnel 47 D Class Personnel 25 Other 4 Facility Layout Parking Lot A flat concrete area located behind the facility buildings. This design allows minimal visibility while transporting anomalous objects. Site Cafeteria A room for serving food to on-site personnel during designated mealtimes. Food Storage Kitchen A room used for the storage and processing of food. Food and water is shipped daily to Facility 23 and stored in this room due to its remote location. The food is then cooked and served to on-site personnel. Maintenance Personnel Offices Office rooms for maintenance personnel such as security staff and janitorial staff. Break Room Used by staff as a place to rest while not working. Due to an incident on October 4, 2019, the break room is slightly larger on the inside. Personnel Residence a two-story section of the facility for the on-site residents of non-D-Class personnel. Individual rooms and structures are not shown. Research Personnel Offices Office rooms for research personnel. Senior researchers' offices are located in the yellow-green area. Multi-purpose rooms Rooms used for meetings, presentations, and conferences. Administrative Personnel Offices Office rooms for administrative personnel. Research Cell 109B Room containing SCP-914 The floor is slightly elevated and plated with steel in order to ground SCP-914 for protection against damage caused by static electricity. Incinerator A room containing the incinerator, used for the destruction of classified information. The incinerator is occasionally used for the destruction of items produced by SCP-914. 
the room also functions as a waste management center. Under circumstances specified in Section 3 of the SCP Foundation Policy on the Handling of Anomalous Phenomena, an Ethics Committee Ruling 10A-0344 Retroactive Justification for Unauthorized Neutralization of Anomalies Research Cell 109A A room used for the storage of items produced by SCP-914 Preliminary Testing Room A laboratory room used for preliminary testing of anomalous products. The properties and effects of anomalous products are documented using various methods, and objects of research interest are occasionally sent to the main facility for further examination. D-Class Personnel Residence A section of the facility for the residents of D-Class Personnel. Individual rooms and structures are not shown. Additional Information Site-19 Facility-23, located in is a facility built specifically to contain SCP-914 and its anomalous products. It is part of the larger Site-19 administration. Facility-23 was originally built in 1988 as an isolated containment facility for multiple large anomalous items. Following Anomalous Item A, reclassification as SCP-914 in 2008, it was moved into Facility-23 and the facility was converted into a research establishment for the purpose of SCP-914 research. Dr. Charles Gears, former director of Euclid-level containment at Site-19, was transferred to the Facility-23 to oversee its research. Testing of SCP-914 began on September 9th of that year. During April 2017, Facility-23 was expanded and partly rebuilt to accommodate the increasing number of researchers and the large amount of testing products accumulated over the years. Dr. Arthur Hackett and Dr. Lucius Veritas were transferred to Facility 23 to replace Dr. Charles Gears, as Director of Administration and Research respectively. As of December 3, 2022, Facility 23 has conducted over individual tests on SCP-914. A log of all tests that have been conducted can be accessed below. Note to all researchers, please include your name in all records, along with date and total number of items refined. Researchers are responsible for all output. Should damage or loss of life occur, the researcher will be subject to administrative review and possible disciplinary action. Biological testing has been suspended. Any biological testing must be cleared by O5 command. Test Log Format all test logs should be written in this form. Name Date Day Month Year Total Items Input Setting Output Test 11828-U5 Test on the nature and construction of SCP-914 With approval from O5 Command, a single gear was removed from one of the outer sections of SCP-914. Placement was carefully documented, and was in a location that would not release tension on any belts or damage any documented sections. Testing area was cleared and sealed after placing a steel block in the intake booth. D-00104 was dispatched to SCP-914, and instructed to turn the key and activate SCP-914. D-00104 reported that the key won't catch and the key was observed to turn several times without tightening the mainspring. No activity of any kind was observed from SCP-914 during this time. Missing gear was replaced with an identical copy, comprised of the same metal, brass, as the original. Steel block reinserted into the intake booth, and SCP-914 was activated on the 1-1 setting. SCP-914 observed to operate normally with a slight pause of 3.5 seconds after winding the key. After refining, output observed to be a solid steel sphere with the same volume as the original steel block. Original gear returned to SCP-914. Note, well, thank god we can at least repair the damn thing if we damage it, assuming we can find what's broken in it. Hell, maybe it's already broken. 
I don't know. This damn thing hurts my head. Dr. Test 914-0101 Name Dr. Gears Date 2000 and Total items 4 clockwork pocket watch, belonging to Dr. Gears Input 1 gold-plated pocket watch Setting Fine Output Small clockwork bird. When the tail is pressed, it produces a robin's call. Input one gold-plated pocket watch. Setting. Fine. Output. Toy clockwork train engine. Input. One gold-plated pocket watch. Setting. Fine. Output. Miniature grandfather clock. Fully functional. Input. One gold-plated pocket watch. Setting. Fine. Output. Small metal sculpture of a piano. Note. It appears there is a high level of randomness when SCP-914 refines an item. However, it seems to preserve some elements of its original composition. In this example, clockworks. This is not a law, but a high probability. Refine a metal bar, and you're more likely to get a simple metal object than an internal combustion engine. Both, however, are possible. Dr. Gears Test 914-0102 Name: Dr. Gears Date Total items 3 copies of all documentation, photographs, and test logs accumulated in relation to SCP-914 Input 1 copy of SCP-914 documentation Setting 1-1 Output Folder containing all previously entered documents, arranged in chronological order Input one copy of SCP-914 documentation. Setting. Fine. Output. Hardbound book containing 400 pages. No diagrams, photos, or other visual aids of any kind are included. The pages appear to be solid black, but microscopic examination shows each page to be covered in approximately 20,000 characters. The text has no correlation with any known writing style, and is not in a linear format with sentences constructed from individual characters spread out between many pages. Each sentence requires an exceedingly complex formula to decode, with each formula unique to each sentence. Note, current decoding work has resulted in two partially translated sentences after 225 work hours. Item appears to be a record of the internal structure of SCP-914. Input One copy Input one copy of SCP-914 documentation. Setting. Very fine. Output. Single sheet of paper. Weight is exactly the same as the entered documentation. The sheet appears to be a single page from the entered SCP-914 documentation. However, when flipped over to the right, the reverse side is the following page in sequence. When flipped over to the left, the opposite side is the preceding page in sequence. No new documentation is included, but this item is significantly easier to store, if more time-consuming to browse. Note, it's screwing with us, you know that right? I don't care if it's been proven that it has no self-awareness, this thing is laughing at us, General. Note, there seems to be some difficulty as to the meaning of fine and coarse on the settings. The machine appears to be capable of refining input based either on a scale of complexity loss of entropy accompanied the increase in connectivity between components and or acquisition of subjective meaning, or of simplification, separation to composite materials and loss of meaning. Dr. Gears Test 914-0103 Name, Dr. Grangan Date Total Items Five adult male cadavers. Input: One cadaver. Setting: Rough. Output: A pile of human remains. Limbs, organs, and bones all appear to have been roughly separated via tearing action and high heat. Output described as unsettling. Input: One cadaver. Setting: Coarse. Output: Pile of human remains. All organs and bones have been removed by some form of cutting tool. The skin, nervous system, digestive system, 
and circulatory system all appeared to have been removed without severing or damaging any of tissues involved. Results frozen for study. Input: One cadaver. Setting: One one. Output: One Asian male cadaver. Original cadaver was identified as Caucasian. Input: One cadaver. Setting: Fine. Output: One cadaver containing SCP-008. Subject immediately incinerated. Input: One cadaver. Setting: Very fine. Output: Green slime. Properties and chemical structure determined to be identical to SCP-447-2. Note. By order of O5, cadavers may no longer be tested in SCP-914, in order to minimize the possibility of SCP-447-2 coming in contact with dead bodies. Test 914-0104 Name Dr. Uros Date Total items 1 pill of SCP-500 Input 1 pill Setting Fine Output one ornate metal locket, now classified as SCP-427. Test 914-0105 Name Dr. Zimla Sin Date Total items Two identical wooden cross pendants, 7.6 cm, 3 inches long. Input One cross Setting Rough Output One fragment of wood of the same mass, cut flat on three sides. This may be a fragment of a larger cross. Input: One cross. Setting: Fine. Output: One wooden crucifix with intricately detailed carving of Jesus Christ. Note: This may imply that SCP-914 has an understanding of religion. More experiments with religious items are indicated. Dr. Sin. Note: this test may indicate that SCP-914 understands the use of input objects and not simply their function. Recommend testing with medicines reliant on the placebo effect to ascertain if outputs provide actual medicinal solutions to problems. Dr. Pyrrhus Test 914-0106 Name Dr. Gibbons Date Total items 300 US dollars 100 US dollars will be used for each testing. Input: 100 US dollars. Setting: Course. Output: A puddle of ink and a small pile of cotton and plastic weighing roughly as much as the original currency. Input: 100 US dollars. Setting: 11. Output: 75 euros. Input: 100 US dollars. Setting: Fine. Output: A shareholder's note for soap from corpses products worth 100 US dollars. It is unknown whether SCP-914 selected the Foundation's front out of pure whimsy or because of some other criteria. Update. As in, Soap from Corpses product shares skyrocketed, and the aforementioned fine output is now worth US dollars. It is under investigation if 914 selected Soap from Corpses products because it knew it was going to rally or if it was a matter of pure luck. Test 914-0107 Name Dr. B Date Total items 5 bronze replicas of the Pioneer 10 and 11 plaques Input 1 plaque in each setting Setting Rough Output Multiple bronze cubes and 2 bronze spheres Setting Coarse Output 105 grams of copper ore and 15 grams of tin ore Setting 1 1 Output Several CDs Tests reveal them to contain the same data as the Voyager Golden Record. Setting Fine Output A record sized bronze disc. Testing shows that using the object with a record player will play a recording of a currently unidentified voice describing the content and meanings of the Pioneer plaque. Setting Very fine Output A bronze gyroscope. 15 cm tall. A needle in the center continuously points in one direction. Testing has confirmed that no matter the position of the gyroscope, this needle points towards our sun. Test 914-0108 Name Dr. B Date Total items 
5 pounds of raw ground beef. Input: 1 pound raw ground beef. Setting: Rough. Output: 1 pound beef slurry. Input: 1 pound raw ground beef. Setting: Fine. Input: 1 pound medium cooked round steak. Input: 1 pound raw ground beef. Setting: Fine. Output: 1 pound pile of beef jerky. Input: 1 pound raw ground beef. Setting: Very fine. Output: 2 half pound blank steaks, well done and lightly drizzled in gravy. Input: 1 pound raw ground beef. Setting: Very fine. Output: Subject terminated with no casualties. Test 914-0109. Name: Doctor Date Total Items 5 IRS Form 1040 Blank Input 1 IRS Form 1040 Blank Setting Rough Output Several hundred thin paper strips Input 1 IRS Form 1040 Blank Setting Coarse Output 1 block of wood, wet with strong-smelling liquid Test indicated the liquid to be composed of a variety of chemicals used in the papermaking process. Input: 1 IRS Form 1040 blank. Setting: 1 1. Output: 1 IRS Form 4868 blank. Input: 1 IRS Form 1040 blank. Setting: Fine. Output: 1 IRS Form 1040 with all blank space including margins and backs of pages filled with imprecations against the IRS and taxation in general, in the following languages. Basque, Quenya see below, Sumerian, Cherokee, an unidentifiable language with a writing system composed of curved symbols, Classical Chinese, English, from the curses used, apparently circa 1650 to 1750. After long study of the unidentifiable symbols, Dr could identify no commonality with any of the other languages present on the form. The Sumerian contained three words unattested from any known text. The Quenya had its cursing of the IRS interspersed with vituperation of someone or something called Morgoth. Input: 1 IRS Form 1040 blank. Setting: Very fine. Output: 1 IRS Form MXL filled out for the year 35 and with the name given as Gaius Julius Caesar Augustus Germanicus, and all monetary amounts given in Roman numerals with the words denarii entered afterwards. Test 914-0110 Name Dr. Clopine Date August 15, 2009 Total Items 5 8.5 by 11 copies of the Mona Lisa printed from a HP PhotoSmart 3310 all-in-one onto photopaper. Input: 1 copy of Mona Lisa. Setting: Rough. Output: 1 pile of shredded photo paper, several pools of ink. Input: 1 copy of Mona Lisa. Setting: Coarse. Output: 1 8.5 inch by 11 inch sheet of plastic. 1 8.5 inch by 11 inch sheet of paper, several pools of ink. Input: 1 copy of Mona Lisa. Setting: 1/1. Output: 1 8.5 inch by 11 inch copy of the Vitruvian Man. Input: 1 copy of Mona Lisa. Setting: Fine. Output: 1 8.5 inch by 11 inch copy of Mona Lisa, painted on the canvas. Testing revealed paint to be oil paint of modern origins. Input: 1 copy of Mona Lisa. Setting: Very fine. Output: one 7-inch by 10-inch copy of the Mona Lisa, painted on a wood panel, identified to be poplar. Paint samples tested to be oil paints made from beeswax, calcined bones, piled glass, and mineral pigments, with indications that pigments were hand-ground. Further testing suggests painting dates to the early 16th century. Output now resides on a wall in Dr. Clopine's office. Test 914-0111 Name: Professor Q. Date: February 13, 2010. Total items: one chessboard, initial setup. Input: 
1 Chessboard Setting 1-1 one, one. Output 1 Chessboard White King's Pawn moved up two spaces Input Board is above, with Black Pawn moved to a legal position Setting 1-1 one, one. Output 1 Chessboard as above, with White Queen moved diagonally to a legal position Note Yes, I've been playing chess with 914 Yes, I'm aware it's probably non-sentient, but that hardly explains why it's winning. Professor Q Test 914-0112 Name, Doctor Date, April 10, 2010 Total Items, by Print of Les Trezons des Images, by René Marguerite Input, one print of above-mentioned painting. Setting, 1-1 one, one. Output one miniature pipe identical to that in the print, with Seum Peep engraved on it. Input One print of above mentioned painting. Setting 1-1. One, one. Output A near identical print, with This is not a pipe, written in English in the same hand as in the original. Input One print of above mentioned painting. Setting Fine. Output A print of Les Deux Mysteries by Rene Marguerite. Input one print of above-mentioned painting. Setting. Very fine. Output. A print of an untitled painting, later definitively confirmed by art experts to have been produced by René Marguerite, despite there being no record of its existence. The painting depicts… In addition to Les Trezons des Images. Input. One print of above-mentioned painting. Setting. Very fine. Output. A blank piece of paper with the mimetic property of inducing observers to believe that it is on a pipe. The paper was accidentally destroyed by Dr. who placed it in his mouth and set it on fire. Dr. was treated for minor burns to his face, but was otherwise not injured. Test 914-0113 Name Dr. Date May 30, 2010 Total Items Five tuna sandwiches on white bread. Input: One tuna sandwich. Setting: Rough. Output: A pile of wheat, a small pile of yeast, a puddle of water, and one segment of twitching, bloody flesh, later identified as tuna musculature. Input: One tuna sandwich. Setting: Coarse. Output: A small loaf of bread and chunks of cooked tuna. Input. One tuna sandwich. Setting. One one. Output. One salmon sandwich on rye bread. Input. One tuna sandwich. Setting. Fine. Output. One tuna sandwich. Tuna was later revealed to be of the highest quality, with light, soft bread. Testing on D-Class personnel resulted in dramatically increased cognitive capacity. Further chemical analysis revealed it to contain unusually high levels of omega-3 and omega-7 fatty acids. Input: One tuna sandwich. Setting: Very fine. Output: One small loaf of bread baked into a very realistic shape of a tuna. When the door was opened, it immediately began swimming around the room and out the door. Subject presumed missing. Test 914-0114. Name: Dr. Date: January 7, 2011. Total items: five adult SCP-939 specimens. Test cleared by O5 Command. Input: One adult SCP-939 specimen was placed with an SCP-914 in each setting. Setting: Rough. Output: A mass of bone splinters, broken teeth, and scraps of translucent red tissue of various sizes. Tissues was observed to twitch spasmodically for several hours before activity ceased. Material preserved for further study. Setting Course Output Subject was divided up into organized piles of tissue, including, but not limited to, presumably, muscle tissue, two piles of ground bone tissue, the significance of this division, if any, is unknown, teeth, skin, a total of approximately 17 meters of esophageal tissue divided into numerous coils, and approximately 15 kilograms of rotting human flesh littered with splinters of bone, shreds of fabric, and a tattered laminated ID tag identifying its owner as D-09355. 
As with the first test, SCP-939 tissue was observed to convulse for several hours before ceasing activity. SCP-939 remains preserved for further study. Human remains incinerated. Setting 1-1 Output Setting Fine Output The same SCP-939 specimen. Respiration was noted to have halted. Test subject was immediately relocated to a reinforced concrete containment chamber, and observed remotely via CCTV. Installation security forces were ordered to high alert. Twenty-four hours passed with no signs of activity from the subject. Subject proved unresponsive to all stimuli, and was pronounced dead thirty-six hours later. The Cropsey was unable to identify a cause of death nor any anatomical revisions attributable to SCP-914. Remains preserved for further study. Setting Very fine. Output A heap of smoldering white ash. Test 914-0115 Name Dr. Date May 9, 2011 Total items 8 identical copies of the King James Bible Input 1 King James Bible Setting Course Output 1 sheet of leather 1 block of wood of approximate dimensions 3 fourths that of the Bible 1 stack of ink-stained rags 1 reel of thread Input one King James Bible Setting 1-1 one, one. Output One copy of the Quran Input One King James Bible Setting 1-1 one, one. Output Hand-illustrated copy of the Dead Sea Scrolls on New Papyri Input One King James Bible Setting Fine Output One book with leaden pages and a golden cover Language unknown Input: One King James Bible. Setting: One One. Output: One book titled The Satanic Bible. Input: One King James Bible. Setting: Fine. Output: One DVD containing animated accounts of all the Bible stories. Input: One King James Bible. Setting: Fine. Output: One statuette, human in form. Quotes Bible passages at random, unless prompted either by book or by a short phrase from the Bible, in which case it continues from that point. Voices are appropriate to persons in Bible. Narrator is a neutral voice of ambiguous gender, unless the book is attributed to a particular person, in which case voices are appropriate to that individual. Input: 1 King James Bible Setting Very Fine Output one book with seemingly infinite pages, current count exceeds two million, containing copies of religious texts with commentaries and footnotes from all known religions, in multiple different languages, plus some religious texts from currently unknown religions. Test 914-0116 Name Dr. Date December 17, 2011 Total Items Three sheets of 8.5 by 11 inch printing paper with variant instructions. Input: A sheet of 8.5 by 11 inch printing paper with the instructions: I would like a quarter pounder with cheese, no pickles, no onions, large order of fries, and a medium Pepsi. Handwritten in number two pencil by Doctor. Setting: One one. Output: A single sheet of 8.5 by 11 inch paper with the words, I would like a Whopper, no ketchup, no mustard, small order of onion rings, and a medium coke. Input: A sheet of 8.5 by 11 inch printing paper, with the instructions, I would like a quarter pounder with cheese, no pickles, no onions, large order of fries, and a medium Pepsi, handwritten in number 2 pencil by Dr. Setting Fine Output a stack of U.S. counterfeit currency, composed of standard paper and printed with number 2 pencil lead. The currency totals to the exact cost of the requested order, plus tax. Input: A sheet of 8.5 by 11 inch printing paper with the instructions, I would like a quarter pounder with cheese, no pickles, no onions, large order of fries, and a medium Pepsi. Handwritten in number 2 pencil by Dr.
Setting: Very fine. Output: A single sheet of 8.5 by 11 inch paper, with a series of symbols inscribed upon it, which do not correspond to any known system of writing. Subjects viewing the symbols describe a sudden and intense desire for a cheeseburger. Test 914-0117. Name: Dr. Westron. Date: February 23, 2013. Total items: one of my screws. Input: my screw. Setting: 1-1. Output: your screw. Test 914-0118. Name: Dr. Psycha Brown. Date: December 7, 2013. Total items: one brand bouncy ball. Cardboard label still attached. Input: one brand bouncy ball with cardboard label. Setting: Fine. Output: A ball carrying a cardboard label identifying it as a brand extra bouncy ball. Behavior was identical to store-bought varieties. Input: One brand extra bouncy ball. Setting: Fine. Output: One ball of smaller shape and differing color, with a cardboard tag specifying it as a brand super duper bouncy ball. The manufacturer does not appear to produce this product. Testing reveals that the ball has 0.% energy loss per bounce, making it extremely efficient. Input: 1 Brand Super Duper Bouncy Ball Setting: Very Fine Output: 1 ball that appears unchanged from the input. There is, however, a difference in its properties, exhibited when dropped by Dr. Brown. 45 casualties, and reach escape velocity, currently thought to be orbiting Mars. Test 914-0119 Name, Dr. Von Hildebrandt Date, March 26, 2014 Total items, one set photocopies and duplicates of lab notes and other research material on SCP-914. Input, one set of research materials, setting, fine. Output: One leather-bound tome, 54 cm by 42 cm, 256 vellum pages, with title written in gold leaf. Language of the title and the contents were at first unidentifiable, and were later discovered to be an old dialect of Finnish. The contents are written in calligraphy, and more than half the pages are elaborately illuminated with colored inks and gold and silver leaf. Once translated, the contents proved to be identical to the contents of the input material, arranged chronologically. The tome has been radiocarbon dated to the early 11th century CE. Anachronistically, a leather pocket is sewn into the inside back cover, and this pocket contains what appears to be a modern compact disc, 10 cm in diameter. Data on this disc is encoded by an unknown codec. Attempts to divine the codec and decipher the data are ongoing. Note, it's a pity the contents of this tome are classified. It's a piece worthy of any museum. I've never seen such exquisite calligraphy. The illuminations may prove to be the most interesting part of the book, though. They often portray clockworks and related mechanical parts, as well as some of the input or output objects. Possibly they relate in a direct, rather than abstract way to the operation of SCP-914 as described on the illuminated pages. Dr. Von Hildebrandt Test 914-0120 Name Doctor Date June 1, 2014 Total items Five small rectangular pieces of paper, measuring 18 by 18 cm, with several equations related to the theory of special relativity, written on them in black ink. Input One piece of paper with certain equations relating to special relativity. Setting rough. Output: A pile of wood pulp and several drops of black ink. Input: One piece of paper with certain equations relating to special relativity. Setting coarse. Output: 18 children's multiplication flashcards. Input: One piece of paper with certain equations relating to special relativity. Input: one piece of paper with certain equations relating to special relativity. Setting 1-1. Output: 
one piece of paper featuring diagrams of Pythagoras' five polyhedral elements. Input. One piece of paper with certain equations relating to special relativity. Setting. Fine. Output. A ceramic tile with small black glyphs. The symbols have not been identified yet. Input. One piece of paper with certain equations relating to special relativity. Setting. Very fine. Output. A small black cube made out of a complex alloy. The cube emits a keening tone in the presence of photons. Test 914-0121 Name Dr. Disk Date June 1, 2014 Total items 5 different bronze ingots, 1 kg each Input 1 kg bronze ingot Setting Rough Output 20 different bronze nuggets Average mass 50 grams. Input 1 kg bronze ingot. Setting Coarse. Output 2 large sized bronze bolts. Mass 500 grams each. Input 1 kg bronze ingot. Setting 1 1. Output 1 200 gram ingot of tin and 1 800 gram ingot of copper. Setting 1 kg bronze ingot. Setting Fine. Output: An intricate bronze hubcap. Mass: 1 kg. Inscriptions appear to be in Korean. Output: 1 kg bronze ingot. Setting: Very fine. Output: A rectangular bronze clock with a height of 24 cm and a mass of 1 kg. It has a self-winding mechanism and appears to return to the proper time if its hands are moved. Note: all outputs of this experiment are currently in storage at Site-19. Test 914-0122 Name Dr. Falconis Date October 4, 2014 Total items Three hardcover copies of Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson Input One hardcover copy of Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson Setting 1-1 one, one. Output one hardcover copy of Bill Gates by Walter Isaacson. Book contents consist of the biography of said figure. Input: One hardcover copy of Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. Setting: Fine. Output: A DVD depicting Steve Jobs narrating his biography. Input: One hardcover copy of Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. Setting: Very fine. Output: a metallic cube with one button on it. When the button is pressed, a holographic image of Steve Jobs appears. The image appears to be sapient, capable of answering basic questions about Jobs' life, as well as about Apple computers. Test 914-0123 Name MTF Zeta-9 Commander Assistant Researcher Daniels Date October 22, 2015 Total Items Five standard issue FN P90 assault rifles, fully loaded. Input: one P90. Setting: fine. Output: one P90 AR. Direct viewing yielded no discernible results, but operation of the rifle showed that it no longer required ammunition, but fired compressed air at 43 billion gigapascals over a maximum distance of 700 meters. Considerable damage to site armory. Test 914-0124 Name Dr. A. Sutherland Date October 24, 2015 Total Items 1 Samsung Galaxy Note 7 Input 1 Samsung Galaxy Note 7 Setting 1-1 one, one. Output 1 M67 Fragmentation Grenade Testing showed no extra normal properties Note I did this out of curiosity and because I wanted to prevent my phone from exploding in my pocket. Apparently SCP-914 has a sense of humor, and keeps up with current events. Dr. A. Sutherland Test 914-0125 Name Dr. Levy Date October 27, 2015 Total Items 4 330ml cans of Coca-Cola brand soda Input one can of Coca-Cola brand soda. Setting: Rough. Output: A small pile of aluminum filings and sugar and a puff of water vapor. 
Input: One can of Coca-Cola brand soda. Setting: Course. Output: A can of Tesco brand cola. Input: One can of Coca-Cola brand soda. Setting: One one. Output: One can of Pepsi brand soda. Input: One can of Coca-Cola brand soda. Setting: Fine. Output: A small pile of cocaine. Test 914-0126 Name Dr. Sanders Date December 25, 2015 Total Items 3 DVDs with It's a Wonderful Life Input 1 DVD with It's a Wonderful Life Setting 1-1 Output 1 DVD with White Christmas Input 1 DVD with It's a Wonderful Life Setting. Fine. Output. One DVD with Home Alone. Input. One DVD with It's a Wonderful Life. Setting. Very fine. Output. One seemingly normal DVD with It's a Wonderful Life. Twelve D-Class personnel viewed the film and, as soon as the movie ended, vanished. They returned exactly 24 hours later. Six were dead and four appear to have been subjected to amnestics. The two who were coherent told interviewers that nobody seemed to recognize them in the alternate universe. Test 914-0127 Name Dr. Devries Date January 21, 2016 Total Items One complete core set of the Dungeons & Dragons books in 3.5e and one bottle of generic vitamin gummies. Input. One complete core set of the Dungeons & Dragons books in 3.5 edition. Setting. Fine. Output. One large book measuring 2 inches by 11 inches by 9 inches, titled, The Complete Dungeons & Dragons Core Set 3.5e. Upon inspection, the book was determined to be a combined version of all three previous books written in Millwitch English font. Note. I'll be keeping this in the lounge if anyone wants to use this. I'll also be holding a game next Tuesday. Bring your own character sheet. Dr. Devries Input One bottle of generic vitamin gummies. Setting 1-1 Output One bottle of generic vitamin tablets. Note I don't know why I expected anything else. Dr. Devries Test 914-0128 Name Dr. Sykes Date February 2, 2016 Total Items 5 Brand Violins 5 Brand Violin Bows Input 1 Brand Violin and Bow Setting Rough Output A small pile of sawdust, plastic fragments, metal shavings, and stiff short hairs. Input 1 Brand Violin and Bow Setting Course Output Several small balls of wood, plastic, metal, and hair sorted by color. Input 1 Brand Violin and Bow Setting 1-1 one, one. Output 1 Brand Viola and Bow Input 1 Brand Violin and Bow Setting Fine Output 1 Brand Violin, tuned to absolute perfection, and one seemingly normal brand bow. Further analysis shows that the violin cannot come out of tune, even when tampered with. Input 1 Brand Violin, setting very fine. Output 1 violin and 1 bow with blue glowing patterns on their surfaces. The violin is perpetually in tune, even when tampered with and the bow does not need the use of rosin. When played by anyone, no matter the skill level, it will invariably produce a tone usually acquired by years of practice, and can play any song perfectly. Music produced by the instrument has a calming effect. Item is awaiting SCP classification. Note, it even made on Mount Golgotha sound nice. Dr. Sykes Test 914-0129 Name Dr. Curtis Date February 7, 2016 Total Items 1 pound of fully cooked 
brand bacon and one photograph of SCP-682. Input: As listed above. Setting: Very fine. Output: One miniature replica of SCP-682, approximately five inches tall at the shoulder, made entirely out of cooked brand bacon and photo paper. Object is fully animate and extremely hostile towards all life forms. It escaped containment, attempting to kill all staff present. It was unable to inflict any damage due to its small size and the materials used in its composition. Entity made a sizzling sound as it moved that several staff described as pleasing to the ears. Classification of Entity as SCP-682 BAC denied. Note, very funny, Dr. Curtis. You are suspended from testing SCP-914 until further notice. Though I have to admit, it smelled delicious. Dr. Gears Test 914-0130 Name Technician Lantern Date February 7th 2016 Total items 4 kg worth of quartz crystals, with a ratio of 15 to 60 mm in length. Note, relax, this time I'm paying for it. By the way, why does the room smell like bacon? Technician Lantern Input 1 kg of aforementioned quartz. Setting Fine. Output A large quartz tuning fork. Once tapped lightly against the wall of the testing chamber, with a side effect of temporary hearing loss. No. Mm-hmm. That fits my hypothesis. Let's try again. Technician Lantern. Input. One kilogram of aforementioned quartz. Setting. Fine. Output. A swarm of crystalline hornets. Behaved as normal hornets would, but were significantly more durable due to composition. The swarm swiftly targeted Technician Lantern, but were subdued before significant harm could be done. Note, I hate it when I'm right. Screw it. The rest goes in the next batch. Technician Lantern Input 2 kg of aforementioned quartz. Setting Fine. Output A ring of polished quartz 18 cm in diameter, levitating off of the ground. Object emitted a continuous ringing and produced light. Audio picked up from testing chamber after all objects were removed. Are you trying to give me away, you idiotic machine? Father above, I'm sorry for whatever I did. Just stop trying to get me fired! Test 914-0131 Name Dr. Veritas Date February 8, 2016 Total items Five identical notes Written and copied by Dr. Veritas Reading Are you sentient? Input One note Setting Course Output A puddle of ink and a small pile of wood pulp. Input One note Setting 1-1 one, one. Output One note of similar size reading Are you capable of feeling, perceiving, and experiencing subjectively? Handwriting does not match Dr. Veritas. Input One note Setting Fine Output one note of similar size containing an excerpt from the 1641 treatise Meditation on First Philosophy by René Descartes in Latin. Note reads, Ego sum, ego existo, quotis amab perpetuer, vel mente concipitor, nasario esse verum. English, I am, I exist, whenever it is uttered from me or conceived by the mind, necessarily is true. Input One note Setting Very fine. Output One note of similar size containing an excerpt from the essay, an essay concerning human understanding by philosopher John Locke reading, This source of ideas every man has wholly in himself, and though it not be sense, as having nothing to do with external objects, yet it is very like it, and might properly enough be called internal sense. Note. The goal of this test was communicating with SCP-914 and discovering if it's self-aware. Let's write that one up as inconclusive. Dr. Veritas
Test 914-0132 Name Dr. Kowalski Date February 9, 2016 Total Items 3 copies of the February 9, 2016 edition of the New York Times Input One item mentioned above Setting 1-1 Output One copy of the February 9, 2016 edition of the Cleveland, Ohio Plain Dealer Cross-checking with another copy of this issue reveals the contents are identical. Input One item mentioned above Setting Fine Output One copy of the February 9, 2016 edition of the New York Times Cross-checking with another copy of the issue reveals numerous differences in the text. These mainly consist of the correction of factual errors, as well as the markup of stylistic errors in a manner resembling that of a red pen. Note, the film critics column completely contradicts the original. Dr. Kowalski Input One item mentioned above. Setting Very fine. Output One copy of the February 10, 2016 edition of the New York Times. Cursory examination of the result reveals large blank sections. The final four pages are completely devoid of any content. Contents of text and advertisements are in constant flux. Articles about contemporaneous events appear and are revised only after the relevant events occur. Note, it seems like we're seeing the draft take shape on the actual newsprint. Interesting. Dr. Kowalski Test 914-0133 Name Dr. Hadian Date February 15, 2016 Total Items 5 Complete Decks of Tarot Cards Input 1 Complete Deck of Tarot Cards Setting Course Output A fine dust containing particles of wood and plastic Input 1 Complete Deck of Tarot Cards Setting Rough Output A loose pile of ink-stained cards Input 1 Complete Deck of Tarot Cards Setting 1-1 one, one. Output A complete deck of tarot cards Shuffled Input 1 Complete Deck of Tarot Cards Setting Fine Output A deck of tarot cards with three drawn out and placed in a row in front of it an upside-down King of Cups, an upside-down Three, the Empress, and a right-side-up Two of Cups. Input: One complete deck of tarot cards. Setting: Very fine. Output: An orbicular device resembling a magic eight ball, composed entirely of wood and plastic. The device accurately and consistently answered simple questions, stored securely for future testing. Note. I asked it if I would have any girlfriends for the next two years. The answer is more depressing than I thought. Dr. Wittig Input One tarot card, removed from one of the previous decks. Setting Very fine. Output A small business card with the words, Dr. Hadian will win the lottery tonight, printed neatly on it. Note, that last one didn't come true. Figures. Dr. Hadian Test 914-0134 Name Dr. Hadian Date March 3, 2016 Total Items Three homemade stress balls made from balloons and rice grains Input One of the above-mentioned stress balls Setting 1-1 one, one. Output A small bean bag, similar to that used by professional jugglers Input one of the above-mentioned stress balls. Setting. Fine. Output. An unaltered stress ball. A stress ball that, at random intervals between a minute and five minutes in length, hurls itself at the face of the person in closest proximity to it. If the face is covered or otherwise protected, it will alternatively aim for the stomach or crotch. Object secured and destroyed. Note, I'm guessing it took the idea of a stress ball very literally. Ouch. Dr. Hadian Input One of the above-mentioned stress balls. Setting Very fine. Output A palm-sized teddy bear 
stuffed with plastic beads. The object is animate, and seems to have a fascination with cuddling, nuzzling ankles, and infrequently requests signs of affection. Object contained for further study. Note, and whoever decides to look into this farther, be nice to the little guy, alright? Dr. Hadian. Note, we're all thinking it, and I'll be the one to say it. This is eerily similar to SCP-1048. Requesting it be fitted with a tracker. Dr. Clinton. Test 914-0135 Name Agent Ackle Date March 20, 2016 Total items 5 bottles of Johnny Walker Whiskey Input 1 bottle of whiskey Setting Fine Output 1 bottle of Lagavulin Scotch Input 1 bottle of whiskey Setting 1-1 one, one. Output one bottle of vodka. Input: One bottle of whiskey. Setting: Fine. Output: One bottle of Balvenie forty-year-old whiskey. Input: One bottle of whiskey. Setting: Very fine. Output: One unmarked fifty-milliliter glass bottle, filled with a clear, purple-flecked liquid. Liquid tastes like high-class bourbon and has an alcohol content of fifty-five percent. Subjects who ingest liquid report extreme euphoria. Input: One bottle of whiskey. Setting: Coarse. Output: A pile of glass shards and a puddle of water and malt. Input: One bottle of vodka from a previous test. Setting: Very fine. Output: Five miniature bottles of Coors vodka. Test: 914-0136. Name: Dr. Hadian Date: March 30, 2016 Total items 3 unsolved Sudoku puzzles and 3 unsolved crossword puzzles Input: An unsolved Sudoku puzzle Setting: 1-1 one, one. Output: An unsolved Sudoku puzzle The numbers have been changed around. It no longer resembles the original puzzle. Input: An unsolved Sudoku puzzle Setting Fine Output A solved Sudoku puzzle, complete with margin notes and scribbling. Input An unsolved Sudoku puzzle. Setting Very fine. Output A massive grid comprised of many smaller squares, resembling an enlarged Sudoku puzzle. The grid contains several characters not normally found in a standard 9x9 Sudoku square, including several Greek letters various unidentified pictographs, arrows, and kanji. Note, this result has been photocopied and enlarged if anybody wants to take a crack at it. Dr. Hadian Input An unsolved crossword puzzle Setting 1-1 one, one. Output An unsolved word search Input An unsolved crossword puzzle Setting Fine Output a brief typed letter requesting the meanings of various short phrases, which are identical to the clues given in the crossword. Input: An unsolved crossword puzzle. Setting: Very fine. Output: A crumpled up piece of paper, launched at high velocity and trailing smoke. Note: Yeah, I never really liked those things either. Dr. Hadian Test 914-0137 Name Dr. Greer Date April 2, 2016 Total items 3 unopened spray cans of Fox Labs White Lightning brand pepper spray Input 1 spray can Setting Rough Output Several piles of metal and plastic scraps Several puddles of various chemicals And a small puddle of oleoresin capsicum Input 1 spray can Setting 1-1 one, one. Output 1 unopened spray can of Fox Labs Mean Green brand pepper spray Input 1 spray can Setting Very fine Output 1 miniature chili pepper Chemical testing revealed a Scoville heat rating of over 300 million, making it by far the hottest chili in the world. Test 914-0138 Name: 
Dr. Ursini Date April 20, 2016 Total items Three 9mm magazines for a standard Glock 19 Input One magazine as stated above Setting 1-1 Output One magazine for the UMP-45 with the same amount of ammunition, causing the magazine to be somewhat empty. Input One magazine as stated above Setting Fine Output One magazine Seemingly identical to the input Item has no effect when fired on inanimate objects. When fired at a human target, the target experiences traumatic memories of being shot, and will fully believe that they have been shot, and will disregard others trying to tell them otherwise. Note, possible use for interrogation by the Foundation? Dr. Ursini Input One magazine as stated above. Setting Very fine. Output When fired, the bullets actively seek out a human target. However, the bullet still loses velocity as per normal, and the turning speed of the bullet can cause it to orbit around a human until it loses all kinetic energy. Note, testing further with that magazine denied. We can't risk it flying through the corridors and causing a containment breach. Dr. Ursini Test 914-0139 Name Dr. Armand and Agent McKnight Date May 6, 2016 Total items Three copies of The Lord of the Rings by J. R. R. Tolkien Input One copy of The Lord of the Rings Setting 1-1 Output Three smaller books One copy of The Fellowship of the Ring One copy of The Two Towers and One copy of The Return of the King It should be noted that these books make up the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Input: One copy of The Lord of the Rings. Setting: Fine. Output: A polished gold-colored ring made of compressed paper. On the ring was the poem described in The Lord of the Rings, inscribed in black speech. When worn, it was found that the ring fits all sizes and grew or shrank to accommodate the wearer. No other anomalous properties were exhibited. Input: One copy of The Lord of the Rings. Setting: Very fine. Output: Book approximately one third the page count of The Lord of the Rings. New book entitled A New Shadow. Plot centered around a boy named Eldarion. It should be noted that a book with the same title was scrapped by J. R. R. Tolkien and therefore was never published. Note: You can have the ring, Armand, but I want the book. I'm going to copy this thing. Any Tolkien fans want to read it? Agent McKnight Test 914-0140 Name Dr. Swin Date September 4, 2016 Total items Three plastic Klein bottles Input One Klein bottle Setting Course Output Small plastic cubes of various sizes Input one Klein bottle. Setting 1 1. Output Two Mobius strips. Input One Klein bottle. Setting Very fine. Output Dimensional anomaly severely injured Dr. Swin when attempting to remove it. Item later imploded, leaving behind a pile of fine ground plastic. Test 914 0141. Name Dr. Gerald's Date November 5, 2016 Total items Four printed images of a swastika Input One printed image of a swastika Setting 1-1 Output One black and white photograph of Adolf Hitler Confirmed to be a copy of an existing photograph Input One printed image of a swastika Setting 1-1 Output one printed image of the lotus symbol, which is common in Hindu iconography. Input: One printed image of a swastika. Setting: Fine. Output: A portrait of Adolf Hitler, hand painted in printer ink. Object does not seem to resemble any such portrait currently in circulation. Input: One printed image of a swastika. Setting: Fine. 
Output: One highly detailed image of the Hindu god Lakshmi. Test: 914-0142. Name: Dr. Geralds. Date: November 5, 2016. Total items: One silver ring, originally belonging to D23387, who described it as having been in her family for generations. Two silver rings, identical to the one owned by D23387. Input: One unmarked silver ring. Setting: Fine. Output: One silver pendant of quality make. Input: One unmarked silver ring. Setting: Very fine. Output: One silver bracelet. While wearing the bracelet, the subjects report feeling an increase in confidence and physical attractiveness. No further anomalous properties exhibited. Object placed in containment for further study. Input: One unmarked silver ring, previously owned by D23387. Setting: Very fine. Output: One silver ring engraved with the phrase "In loving memory of." Is confirmed to be a deceased relative of D23387. Object placed into containment. Note: This, combined with the last test seems to strongly suggest that SCP-914 acts on the meaning humans apply to objects, rather than any self-aware view of them. This certainly explains some of the behavior of SCP-914, but I still feel like we're missing something. Dr. Geralds Test 914-0143 Name Dr. Date November 10, 2016 Total Items Three 512 gig thumb drives containing modern software for generation and multiplication of prime numbers of the type used in cryptography. Input: One thumb drive, as described above. Setting: One one. Output: One thumb drive containing the first prime numbers. Input: One thumb drive, as described above. Setting: Fine. Output. One thumb drive, containing software designed to solve a variety of different known codes and ciphers, as well as some that are currently undocumented. Input: One thumb drive, as described above. Setting: Very fine. Output: One thumb drive. Object appears to have an internal quantum computing system, and when given encoded data, will compare to any modern system. Object placed into containment for further study. Test 914-0144 Name Researcher Date April 20, 2017 Total items Three non-magnetic 1 kg chunks of magnetite with an iron content of 50% by mass. Magnetite acquired from the Badlands Input 1 kg chunk of magnetite, 50% iron content. Setting: Fine. Output: 1 magnetized 1 kg cube of magnetite, with a magnetic field strong enough to cause compasses up to 10 meters away to point directly at it. Input: 2 1 kg chunks of magnetite, 50% iron content. Setting: 1 1. Output: 1 kg chunk of pure iron a 1 kg chunk of minerals revealed to have the same chemical composition as rock found in the Badlands. Test 914-0145 Name Dr. Margian Date May 5, 2017 Total Items 5 Plush Bears Input 1 Plush Bear Setting Rough Output a large mound of stuffing and torn up fabric. Aforementioned fabric also had burns. Input: One plush bear. Setting: Coarse. Output: One ball of stuffing wrapped in fabric of bear. Input: One plush bear. Setting: One one. Output: One plush dog. Input: One plush bear. Setting: Fine. Output. Aforementioned bear is remade out of velvet and is soft to the touch. Input: One plush bear. 
Setting: Very fine. Output: One animated plush bear. Subject is harmless and will piggyback on anyone that is curious about. It then will proceed to show large amounts of affection to the carrier. Subject is currently being tested before clearing release to Dr. Margian. Test 914-0146 Name Dr. Grunsberg Date May 6, 2017 Total Items 5 DVD copies of 1999 motion picture The Matrix Input 1 DVD copy of 1999 motion picture The Matrix Setting Rough Output one small pile of polycarbonate plastic in powder form alongside trace amounts of ink. Input: One DVD copy of 1999 motion picture The Matrix. Setting: Course. Output: One blank DVD RW circa year 2000. Input: One DVD copy of 1999 motion picture The Matrix. Setting: 1-1. Output: Seven celluloid film reels adding up to a full showing of 1999 film The Matrix, plus trailers for films to release that same year. Input: One DVD copy of 1999 motion picture The Matrix. Setting: Fine. Output: One damage-resistant DVD copy of 1999 motion picture The Matrix. Input: One damage-resistant DVD copy of 1999 motion picture The Matrix. Setting: Fine. Output: One Blu-ray drive readable copy of 1999 motion picture The Matrix, exact disc format unknown. As well as possessing the high resistance of the first fine output, the extra section of this disc was found to contain 20,000 times more material than present on the market product, of which SCP-914's version included, but was not limited to, all footage shot for behind-the-scenes featurettes. Complete footage of every actor and actress auditioned by film directors, regardless of final employment. All raw, unedited footage shot by main cameras for The Matrix. All 3D models and 2D assets used to create visual effects for The Matrix. Every sound effect and musical cue in isolated audio files, including all unused material, with full Hollywood orchestration for concepts scrapped or forgotten by the film's composer plus dozens of remixes for licensed tracks. Note, after multiple tests to ensure minimal levels of danger, DISC was included in carefully constructed anonymous package designated for delivery to household of one. Due to last-second discovery of sensitive production notes on DISC that could jeopardize stability of film's parent production company, package was intercepted halfway to destination. Input. One Blu-ray drive readable copy of 1999 motion picture The Matrix. Exact disc format unknown. Setting: Fine. Output: One readable physical storage medium. Object initially unreadable. However, after eight months of development, a prototype for a new kind of storage reader was built by Foundation researchers. Upon successful reading. Researchers found object that contained a bewildering array of data. Dr. estimated that 99.999926% of content is entire raw, non-anomalous, dating back to roughly 1877. The new unit of storage also features a 30-hour-long documentary series, A History Tinted Green, which explores how the Matrix fits into this timeline. Various figures are interviewed in a featureless white room by what appears to be a young Of note is a joint interview of Samuel Clemens and Joseph Campbell. Note 1. Dr. A noted film enthusiast entered a destructively excited emotional state upon learning a breadth of content, and, for Project's protection, has been denied access to laboratory for study's duration. Requests for specific data from the object, however, are not to be rejected. No extraordinary data handling rules currently require enforcement, although this may change if Dr. interests become the dangerous obsession. The object will be tested to discern if recreation of new medium falls within safe limits. Input: 
One DVD copy of 1999 motion picture The Matrix. Setting: Course. Output: One heavily worn VHS home video of Japanese schoolchildren acting out 1999 motion picture The Matrix in backyard. Addendum: One child has been successfully identified, with the others in progress. Approximately nine Foundation-tested anonymous packages are being designed, with fractal remastered content to be included within. Note, one package air mailed to address in Fukushima. Test 914-0147 Name, Dr. McGuire Date, May 11, 2017 Total items, three Marshall brand speaker systems Imp <clears throat> Input One Marshall brand speaker system Setting 1 1 Output One Sony brand speaker system Sound quality was identical between the two, despite the differing manufacturers and materials. Input One Marshall brand speaker system Setting Fine Output One speaker system of unknown brand. When turned on and provided with music, Sound produced was indistinguishable from the quality and timbre of a live performance by instrumentation. Input: One Marshall brand speaker system. Setting: Very fine. Output: One black spear, assumed to be a single continuous speaker. When approached by D-9566, object scanned his head, emitted a sharp electronic beep, and began to emit sound at around 150 decibels. Mild structural damage was done to the test chamber, and all personnel within 500 meters of the chamber sustained hearing damage of varying degrees, from temporary damage to permanent loss. Activation event was ended when Agent Kane opened fire on the object with a sidearm. While these shots missed the object, they did impact with D-9566, killing him and ceasing the event. Note, I can't believe the last thing I ever heard was Barry Manilow. We couldn't have found a D-Class with better music taste? Dr. McGuire Test 914-0148 Name, Dr. Date, May 15, 2017 Total items 3 50 pence coins The first is a Britannia issue coin minted in 1997, one of the most common designs used. The second is a coat of arms issue coin minted in 2012, another very common design. And the third is a Kew Gardens issue coin minted in 2009, one of the rarest coins in circulation, and highly sought after by collectors. Input: One Britannia issue 50 pence coin, dated 1997. Setting: Fine. Output: One Britannia issue 50 pence coin, dated 2008. Output is notably less tarnished than input. Input: One coat of arms 50 pence coin, dated 2012. Setting: Fine. Output: Six coins, each of a different denomination of British currency. All are in the post-2008 coat of arms style, although the date on each coin varies between 2008 and 2014. Input: One Q Gardens 50 pence coin, dated 2009. Setting fine. Output: 120 pence coin with no date. Note: In 2008, due to a mistake at the Royal Mint, a single batch of 20 pence coins were minted without a date. These dateless 20 pence coins are highly sought after by collectors, in a similar manner to the input coin. Test 914-0149. Name: Agent Reed. Date: May 21st. 2017 Total items 5 Brand recording microphones Input 1 microphone, as mentioned above Setting, rough Output A small pile containing coil, wire, and various metal sheets Input 1 microphone, as mentioned above Setting, coarse Output Same microphone as mentioned above, heavily worn and rusted Input: One microphone as mentioned above. Setting: 
1-1. Output. Different brand of microphone. Slightly golden. Input. One microphone is mentioned above. Setting fine. Output. Vintage microphone. Confirmed to be from the 1970s. Later confirmed to be identical to the microphone used at Elvis Presley's last concert. Input. One microphone is mentioned above. Setting. Very fine. Output. A highly reflective blue microphone. Audio recorded on the microphone has no correlation to any nearby sounds. Audio is often completely random, containing popping, banging, ringing, etc. After prolonged exposure to these sounds, subjects report feeling nauseous and paranoid. Note, this could be used as some sort of interrogation device. I'll keep it in the sight armory if anyone wants to use it. Agent Reed Test 914-0150 Name Dr. Date May 11, 2017 May 18, 2017 May 25, 2017 Total items 3 10-pound notes One will be used for each test. Each test will occur at 12 p.m. GMT. Input One 10-pound note Setting 1-1 Output 100 Hong Kong Dollars Note Hong Kong was previously British territory prior to 1997. It is unknown whether SCP-914 chose Hong Kong dollars by chance, or if it chose its currency due to Hong Kong's prior association with Great Britain. Although the fact that it chose to use a note from the pre-handover era leads to the latter theory. Also of note is that 100 Hong Kong dollars was, at the time of the test, almost equal in value to the 10 pounds used as an input. input. One 10-pound note. Setting. 1-1. One, one. Output. Two 5-pound notes. Both from the same year as the input. Input. One 10-pound note. Setting. 1-1. One, one. Output. 11 pounds 60 pence. Note. This was, on the day of the test, almost equal to the value of the money used as an input. Dr. Test. 914-0151 Name: Researcher Mason Date, May 26, 2017 Total Items 4 LEGO X-Wing Starfighter Construction Sets Unopened Input 1 LEGO X-Wing Starfighter Construction Set Unopened Setting Rough Output A heap of molten plastic, wood pulp, and various inks Input 1 LEGO X-Wing Starfighter Construction Set Unopened Setting 1 1. Output 1 LEGO TIE Fighter Construction Set. Unopened. Input 1 LEGO X Wing Starfighter Construction Set. Unopened. Setting Fine. Output A fully assembled LEGO X Wing. Upon further examination, various mechanisms and devices were discovered inside the X Wing, such as electronically operated landing gear, wings, lights, and canopy. Input: One LEGO X-Wing Starfighter Construction Set Unopened Setting Very Fine Output X-Wing flew out of output booth at 72 km per hour and shot heated plasma at any personnel in his way, resulting in Casualties Object broke out of sight and left the atmosphere in 12 seconds. Current location is unknown. Test 914-0152 Name: Dr. Geralds Date: June 3, 2017 Total Items 3 Lithium-Ion Batteries Manufactured by A123 Systems Input 1 Lithium-Ion Battery Setting 1-1 one, one. Output 1 Lithium-Ion Battery Manufactured by the Chinese company Hunan Shanshan Tota Advanced Materials Company Input one lithium ion battery. Setting fine. Output. One object that resembles an unmarked lithium ion battery. Closer inspection revealed that much of the internal mass of the battery had been converted into a radioactive isotope of deriving power from its nuclear decay, with a design very similar to that used in many spacecraft. Object placed into storage.
Input: One lithium-ion battery. Setting: Very fine. Output: When the output door opened, air rushed into the output chamber, as if a vacuum had been present within. The object is a black cube with two electrical nodes on the top, 15 cm across, and weighing exactly the weight of the input battery, plus the air in the chamber. The object is unmarked, with the exception of a small printing on one side, warning users that the object contained antimatter, and advising caution. Antimatter composition of object has not yet been confirmed, but has shown no limit to energy capacity. Object currently under testing. Note, I think we should refrain from putting anything with a lot of potential energy into SCP-914 in the future. If the pressure wave from the air had damaged the output, all of sight could have been destroyed. Not a pleasant thought. Dr. Gerald's Test 914-0153 Name Dr. Kabika Date June 6, 2017 Total items 1 Crayola brand crayon Standard red color 1 Crayola brand marker Standard red color Input 1 Crayola brand crayon Standard red color Setting very fine Output 1 vibrant red crayon No wrapping or any form of brand mark Note, after testing the crayon, the crayon mark seems to radiate heat and light with a red hue. Crayon put in storage for further testing. Input, one Crayola brand marker, standard red color, setting very fine. Output, one marker, no brand mark. Removing the cap reveals a bright red tip. Tip stays bright despite the level of light in the room it occupies. Marks made by the output glow red and radiate heat in a similar way to the last object. Note, testing proves that both the crayon and marker are safe. They have been subsequently placed in the lounge. Test 914-0154 Name, Dr. Hadian Date, July 8, 2017 Total items, three comforters, fitted for twin-sized beds. Input, one of the comforters. Setting 1-1 Output A quilt of similar make and size Input One of the comforters Setting Fine Output A handcrafted blanket The thread count is notably high, and the surface has a sleek, silky feel, but the mass is unaltered. Input One of the comforters Setting Very fine Output A comforter that has shown moderately anomalous properties. Testing with a few voluntary subjects shows that wrapping them up in the blanket, such that it covers around 80% of their body, results in a sense of security and well-being. Subjects wrapped in it and laid on their back report drowsiness and lose consciousness exactly 300 seconds later. The subject remains unconscious until the blanket is removed, at which point they awaken, reporting a restful sleep. Additionally, during this rest period, Minor injuries and afflictions disappear, including scrapes, bruises, and in one case, a nasty cold. Note, well, that's enough from me for tonight. Someone wake me at 8, will ya? Dr. Hadian Test 914-0155 Name, Dr. Collins Date, August 17, 2017 Total items, five new generic brand skateboard wheels with bearings. Input: One green wheel. Setting: Rough. Output: A few chunks of unformed green rubber and plastic, as well as a small pile of steel dust. Input: One green wheel. Setting: Coarse. Output: Disassembled green skateboard wheel. Appears to have been used heavily and shows scuff marks and discoloration. Input: One green wheel. Setting: One one. Output. One red wheel of identical make and quality. Input: One green wheel. Setting fine. Output: One unmarked black wheel of almost perfect quality. The outer rubber of the wheels greatly resists wear, even with prolonged use, and the center bearing exhibits almost no friction, and was successfully left spinning in a vacuum-sealed environment for just under days. Input: One green wheel. Setting very fine. 
Output: One bearing, suspended by an invisible outer wheel of unknown material. Although invisible, the outer wheel physically exists and appears to use higher dimensional translations to redirect the force of gravity and propel the object forward at about half the speed of freefall. The wheel can be easily stopped at low speeds, but gains momentum quickly while unhindered. Prospective researchers should note that under the influence of gravity, the wheel will always retain a 1 4th milligram horizontal force, even while at rest. Note, and they say you can't reinvent the wheel. Dr. Collins Addendum Following the collision of a Class D personnel with Dr. at miles per hour, all human testing has been suspended until Dr. can come up with proper testing protocols. Test 914-0156 Name Dr. Hattie Ann Date August 19, 2017 Total Items Three collections of children's toys made from magnets and ball bearings. Input One magnet and bearing set. Setting 1 1. Output A collection of interlocking plastic rods. The tips of each are magnetized. Input One magnet and bearing set. Setting Fine. Output A series of magnetic rods and metal balls that appear to be self replicating and self assembling. Current structure is a pyramid roughly half a meter wide and tall. This structure shows no other anomalous properties, and has been safely contained. Input: One magnet and bearing set. Setting: Very fine. Output: A fine metal dust that exhibits similar properties to the fine result, appearing to resolve itself into crystalline structure. It can be safely molded by hand, with the rough consistency of hot wax, and can be pulled apart without much effort. Class D personnel who touched the substance barehanded reported a feeling of delight, and continued to play with it even as it encased their hands. Subjects were pulled away without injury, and the substance has been contained. Note, well, it certainly seems like a fun little toy to play with, but I'm fairly certain this isn't safe by any metric. Dr. Hadian Test 914-0157 Name Dr. C. Ahirna Date: August 21, 2017 Total Items 3 Samsung Galaxy Phones Input: 1 Samsung Galaxy Phone Setting 1-1 Output: 1 Apple iPhone Input: 1 Samsung Galaxy Phone Setting Fine Output: A cell phone of unknown maker model, still using the same Android operating system as before. The device seems to have the capability to use cellular data even when out of range of any cell towers. More testing is required. Input: One Samsung Galaxy Phone Setting very fine Output: A black, malleable circular disc with a single button on the back. Pressing the button causes a hologram to begin projecting from a small LED-like device on the front. The hologram functions as an operating system for the device which, like the output produced by the fine setting, never loses cellular service. More testing is required. Note, I think we should reverse engineer the holographic phone produced by the very fine test. It could potentially be an amazing business opportunity if we can figure out how to reproduce it. Dr. Ahirna Test 914-0158 Name, Dr. Greer Date, August 30th 2017. Total items: five blank key cards, not loaded with cryptographical access codes, intended to be used by technicians to test new card readers. Input: one key card. Setting: rough. Output: a small pile of ground PVC plastic and approximately half a gram (0.5 grams) of magnetic composite material. Input: one key card. Setting: coarse. Output: One blank key card, cut in half. Input: One key card. Setting: One one. Output: One SCP Foundation identification card. The card appeared to belong to John Doe, and was filled out with similar generic information. Input: One key card. Setting: Fine. Output: One clearance level five key card. 
the card was demagnetized and discarded. Input: One key card. Setting: Very fine. Output: One key card, belonging to a non-existent company, or Watchenzeli. Upon insertion to a key card reader, it will cause an immediate short circuit. Test 914-0159. Name: Dr. Mason. Date: September 7, 2017. Total items: five real-time location beacons. Standard Foundation issue. Note: The area above and around SCP-914 was set with receivers before this test. In this test, all directional notation is relative to the central intake and output booths, i.e., a subject standing at the main spring is facing north. Input: One tracking beacon. Setting: Rough. Output. Small amounts of various scrap metals and other composite materials of tracking beacons. Path. Within the first 0.15 seconds, the signal was traced to move 3.41 meters north before turning exactly 91 degrees. Signal was lost after another 0.3 meters. <clears throat> Input. One tracking beacon. Setting course. Output. One tracking beacon with battery and transceiver unit removed. No other visible damage. Path. While again initially traveling north for 3.41 meters, the tracking device remained functional for almost twice the amount of time as the first trial. This path appeared to follow the outer edges of the rectangular main body of SCP-914 before the signal was lost. Note, I wonder if there are set paths that each setting follows. Dr. Mason Input: One tracking beacon. Setting 1-1. Output: One unlabeled tracking beacon consistent with those used by Canadian counter-terrorist groups. Path: North for 3.41 meters. Signal then moves towards one of the southwestern outer segments of SCP-914, where it repeatedly follows the equilateral triangle for 0.13 seconds before losing signal. Analysis of received signals show the new signal retracing a path back to the booths. Note, seriously though, what is that first bit northward for? I've checked the recordings. It does that in every test. Every. Single. One. Dr. Mason Input. One tracking beacon. Setting fine. Output. One apparent tracking beacon. Components consistent with Foundation Pacific requirements. Tracking beacon is smaller than standard, with certain unknown components. Testing revealed it to be fully operational, although signal was lost mid-test, as the output ran a different operating system. Path North for 3.63 meters. South-southeast for 0.7 meters. Accelerates in the opposite direction for 4 meters before signal cutoff. Note, so, I was talking to a colleague about my testing and they said that the fine output sounded familiar. Turns out the smaller beacon and the new OS are both prototypes right now. Guess we end up using them. Dr. Mason Input: One tracking beacon. Setting very fine. Output: One thin strip of translucent film, shown to be attachable with static cling. Discovered to be remarkably resilient for its size when D-1126 tore a fingernail pulling it off of the wall of the output booth. Currently unreadable. Path North for 3.41 meters. Subsequently appears to reach all parts of SCP-914, although high speeds prevented receivers from accurately tracking the path. Note 1. Well, that was disappointing. At least I got a strip of fancy tape. Hopefully I'll be able to get something out of the prior results. Dr. Mason no, too. So, turns out if you let that tape stick itself to your hand, you can draw the pass of whatever it recorded. You can also draw a legend, and what appears to be a menu screen. I'm going to try to get this put onto a D-Class to preserve my wrists. Dr. Mason Note 3. Wow. So, not only did the new tracker record its own movements, it somehow recorded all the movements of everything that 914 had worked on over the last three months. I think I've finally gotten 914 to work with us, albeit with a lot of analysis involved. 
This is amazing. Dr. Mason. Note 4 I thought it would make sense for once, but no! It had to be messing with us again. One of my interns, sorry, junior researchers, found out that if you superimpose all the paths from the tracker, you get a 3D image of the Foundation logo. It's pretty for art drawn in GPS, but it still makes this whole project meaningless. Piece of doesn't follow set paths. It does whatever it wants. Dr. Mason Note 5. Dr. Mason has been placed on psychological leave due to apparent stress. Junior Researcher Chen has taken over. Analysis of the object paths taken will continue. O5 Command Test 914-0160 Name Dr. Praetorius Date September 15, 2017 Total Items Five Promotional Audio Compact Discs Banana Pancakes by Jack Johnson Input One Disc Setting Rough Output Shredded Multicolored Reflective Polycarbonate Plastic Coated with Aluminum Input One Disc Setting Coarse Output Pools of yellow and black ink, mostly likely from label. Aluminum and polycarbonate plastic pellets. Input: one disc. Setting: one one. Output: one audio compact disc. Ain't no reason. By Brett Denon. Input: one disc. Setting: fine. Output: one apparently unchanged compact disc. However, when played for D-class personnel. They commented on the superior quality of the music, and a lasting preference for Jack Johnson singing, requesting more of his works. Measurement of the duration of musical preference and progress. Input: One disc. Setting very fine. Output: One apparently unchanged compact disc. However, when played for D-class personnel, test subjects mentioned tasting maple syrup and bananas. Additionally had a feeling of fullness afterwards. They declined offers of food for a period of four hours afterwards, and blood tests immediately after the experiment indicated the consumption of a high-carbohydrate meal, even though no food had been consumed by the subject for six hours previously. No anomalous effects were reported. Note, interesting results. Let's see what happens with a different CD, Doctor. Test 914-0161 Name, Dr. Praetorius Date: September 16, 2017 Total Items 5 Audio Compact Discs Toxic by Britney Spears Input 1 Disc Setting Rough Output Shredded Multicolored Reflective Polycarbonate Plastic Coated with Aluminum Input 1 Disc Setting Coarse Output Pools of Black and Red Ink Most Likely from Label Aluminum and polycarbonate plastic pellets. Input: one disc. Setting: one one. Output: one audio compact disc. Beautiful by Christina Aguilera. Input: one disc. Setting: fine. Output: one apparently unchanged compact disc. However, when played for D-class personnel, they commented on the extreme skill of the singing. Subsequently, stomach pains and nausea were reported. Anomalous effects continue for approximately 36 hours after the test. Input: One disc. Setting: Very fine. Output: One apparently unchanged compact disc. However, when played for D-class personnel, an immediate euphoric effect was noted, with certain individuals weeping with emotion, and others falling over with apparent rictus smiles on their face. Soon after the effects were noted, additional symptoms were exhibited, including seizures jaundice, and vomiting. The experiment was immediately ended. However, researcher A-1 was injured by D-17645 while attempting to turn off the disc player, begging the researcher to allow him to continue listening to the music. Security proceeded to restrain the remaining ambulatory D-Class personnel long enough for to deactivate the player. Physical examinations and testing of the individuals exposed to the music revealed the presence of a previously unknown euphoric-inducing toxin in their bloodstreams. Chelation was performed, but one individual expired from a combination of kidney failure, 
liver failure, and cardiac necrosis. Note, let's try and avoid any more CDs that might be interpreted as dangerous. It might be a good idea to just get a Lawrence Welk single and see if people get drunk. Doctor. Test 914-0162 Name Dr. P Date October 10, 2017 Total Items 5 Four copies of the book Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix Input One book Setting Rough Output Large pile of shredded and burnt paper Input One book Setting Course Output Book Cover all pages of the book ripped out and scattered around the empty cover. Input: One book. Setting 1-1. Output: One copy of the book Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, but in Spanish. Input: One book. Setting: Very fine. Note: Input was supposed to be set to fine. Output: One paper phoenix, weighing 2.65 pounds, same weight as a copy of the book. The Phoenix then attacked the remaining two copies of the book, the remaining English copy and the Spanish copy from the previous test, and attempted to attack personnel. It was killed with only minor paper cuts to Dr. P. Test 914-0163 Name: Dr. Dextrania Date: October 11, 2017 Total Items 1 Remington 870 shotgun, no bullets chambered, 15 9mm bullets, and 1 Beretta M9 handgun Input: 1 Remington 870 shotgun Setting Fine Output: 1 Mossberg pump shotgun When fired, Acted normal for a Mossberg, and was discarded to the armory locker after testing, and no other anomalies were found to be present. Input: 15 9mm bullets. Setting very fine. Output: 9mm bullets that when fired from a Beretta M9 handgun, home to the nearest signs of life. In the event of testing, a security guard was hit and killed. The cause of death was not from a wound, but from cardiac arrest. The bullets were discarded. Note, I'm not sure if the bullets should be used as actual ammunition, as they pose a huge threat to other personnel. I'm requesting that testing of bullets on very fine is prohibited. Dr. Dextrania Note, Granted, 057 Test 914-0164 Name, Dr. Simonson Date, October 12, 2017 Total items: three jars of crude oil. Input: one jar of crude oil. Setting rough. Output: one jar of solid asphalt. Note: the jar was unharmed. Strangely, Dr. Simonson. Input: one jar of crude oil. Setting fine. Output: one jar of gasoline. Input: one jar of crude oil. Setting very fine. Output. One jar of LPG. Aforementioned gas quickly escaped after opening the output door. Note, I probably should have sealed it. Dr. Simonson Test 914-0165 Name, Dr. Reese Date, October 13, 2017 Total items Five generic gumballs, assorted colors. Commonly found in grocery store 25-cent candy dispensers. Input: One purple gumball. Setting rough. Output: Melted puddle of gum. Separate puddle of purple food coloring. Input: One red gumball. Setting coarse. Output: Separate piles of dextrose, corn syrup, gum base, cornstarch, and red food dyes. Input: One green gumball. Setting one one. Output. One everlasting gobstopper? Input: One blue gumball. Setting fine. Output: One blue gumball. Outer shell with a much glossier blue than input gumball. When chewed, subject reported 
that the flavor was that of farm-ripened blueberries. Input: One yellow gumball. Setting: Very fine. Output: One shiny yellow gumball. Gum appears to glow faintly in low light. Testing indicates no source for this glow. When chewed, subject reported feelings of euphoria. Subject indicated that the gum reminded them of their favorite childhood meal, but couldn't elaborate as to what the flavor actually was. Flavor apparently does not fade away as with normal chewing gum. Note, the everlasting flavor seems to be further indication that this thing modifies objects based on our perception of them. Everyone wishes gum would keep its flavor for more than a few minutes. Dr. Reese Test 914-0166 Name Dr. Simonson Date October 23, 2017 Total items 3 ordinary keys from the lost and found room Input 1 key Setting Course Output A drill bit Subject was made of brass, as was the input item Input 1 key Setting 1-1 one, one. Output A padlock Subject can be opened by a replica of the input key Input 1 key Setting very fine Output A perfect copy of SCP-005, including its anomalous properties Subject is now contained at site Test 914-0167 Name Dr. Ashwood Date October 24 2017 Total items 3 wool blankets Input 1 wool blanket Setting course Output A pile of unrefined wool Input 1 wool blanket Setting 1-1 one, one. Output A cotton blanket of identical mass and thickness Input 1 wool blanket Setting very fine Output an extremely light absorbent blanket made out of an unidentified material. When given to D-Class personnel, feeling was described as extremely comfortable. Note, I'm going to be taking this one home for some extra research. Yeah, Dr. Ashwood. Note, rumors have circulated around the building that Dr. Ashwood was seen cuddling with her blanket several hours after testing in the mess hall. Reminder that it is very unprofessional to spread rumors about other personnel. Test 914-0168 Name Dr. Westron Date November 11, 2017 Total items One piece of paper referencing Input One piece of paper referencing Setting Fine Output Test 914-0169 Name Researcher Date December 8, 2017 Total items 1 10 kg ingot of copper 1 10 kg ingot of tin 1 500 gram block of wood 1 100 gram spool of cloth 1 50 gram nugget of copper 1 50 gram nugget of tin 2.5 grams of wood A 0.5 gram patch of cloth and two photographs of SCP-914. Input: 1 10 kg ingot of copper, 1 10 kg ingot of tin, 1 500 g block of wood, 1 100 g spool of cloth, one photograph of SCP-914. Setting: Very fine. Output: 1 miniature model of SCP-914, weighing the same as all input materials, including the photograph. The model possesses all features of the original, including complex miniaturized clockwork, intake booths, and a miniature setting knob and mainspring key. The miniature model was tested to determine if it functions similarly to SCP-914. Input: 1 50g nugget of copper, 1 50g nugget of tin, 2.5g of wood, a 0.5g patch of cloth. One photograph of SCP-914. Setting: Very fine. Output: One even smaller model of SCP-914 weighing the same as all input materials, including the photograph. The model possesses all features of the original, including complex miniaturized clockwork, intake booths, 
and a miniature setting knob and a mainspring key. Note, it's SCP-914 all the way down. Researcher. Test 914-0170. Name: Dr. Hadian. Date: December 18, 2017. Total items: one roll of yarn and one porcelain teapot, full. Input: the above items. Setting fine. Output: one teapot, still porcelain, of the same make as the input. However, it was filled with a viscous, multicolored fluid. Additionally. The yarn was replaced with a length of brown string that has a vaguely earthy scent to it. Further testing shows the teapot's contents to be chemically similar to organic fibers, particularly those found on the coats of several subspecies of sheep, while the string appears to be made from the remains of a plant of the family Theaceae. Note, how did it even do that? Dr. Hadian Test 914-0171 Name, Dr. Obbs Date: January 6, 2018 Total Items Two TARDIS Flight Control Toys 10th and 11th Input One TARDIS Flight Control Toy 10th Setting Very Fine Output The TARDIS Flight Control Toy changed era, going from 10th to 5th, though a toy of this era never existed. Input One TARDIS Flight Control Toy 11th Setting Very Fine Output. Same as previous item. Note, the cheeky bugger is saying fifth is better. Dr. Obbs. Test 914-0172. Name, Dr. Mellows. Linguistics. Date, January 20, 2018. Total items. 50 English-Russian dictionaries. Note, let's see if we can look into some known to unknown languages. All 50 tests will be done on the 1-1 setting, Melos. Input: 1 English-Russian Dictionary Setting 1-1 Output: 1 Swahili-Mongolian Dictionary Note, yes, we're on the right track, Melos. Test 2-35 omitted Input: 1 English-Russian Dictionary Setting 1-1 Output: 1 Mayan Hieroglyphics, Egyptian Hieroglyphics Dictionary Note, I got excited there for a moment. Might need to look up the Rosetta Stone. Mellows. Test 37 through 42 omitted. Input: 1 English Russian Dictionary. Setting 1-1. Output: 1 Klingon Arabic Dictionary. Note, finally an alien language. Mellows. Note, no, that's from a TV show. Assistant researcher. Note, damn. Mellows. Input: 1 English-Russian Dictionary Setting Fine Output: 1 book listing human foodstuff dishes for many occasions with presumed alien foodstuff dishes, or those same occasions with images of normal human and presumed alien foodstuffs. The human dishes are in described in French. The alien dishes are described in an unknown language, using the International Phonetic Alphabet. Note, who set this thing to fine? Well, at least we now know how to cater to the aliens, and what their food is called. Mellows. Tests 45-49 omitted. Input. 1 English-Russian Dictionary. Setting 1-1. Output. 1 Braille English Pictogram Dictionary. Note. We got a limited understanding of alien food and not much else. I'll need to rethink my strategy here. Mellows. Test 914-0173 Name, Dr. Sato Date, January 21, 2018 Total items One copy of Blank's report Input One copy of Blank's report Setting 1-1 Output Nothing Note, Dr. Sato believes that rather than there having not been any output, but rather, Blank managed to retrieve it before any results could be examined. Test 914-0174 Name, Dr. Oker Date, January 25, 2018 Total Items 1 Junction Field Effect Transistor Input 1 Junction Field Effect Transistor Setting 1-1 Output 1 Miniature Model of Django Fett Note, not a bad pun. Dr. Oker
Test 914-0175 Name Dr. J Date February 7, 2018 Total Items 5 IMI Desert Eagles chambered in 50 cal AE Unloaded Input 1 IMI Desert Eagle 50 cal AE Setting Rough Output Approximately 4.4 pounds of metal chunks Consists with the weight of one such Desert Eagle. Input: 1 IMI Desert Eagle, 50 cal AE. Setting course. Output: 1 fully disassembled Desert Eagle. Each component sorted based on size. Input: 1 IMI Desert Eagle, 50 cal AE. Setting 1-1. Output: 1 IWI Jericho 941. Note. The Jericho is a pistol also designed and manufactured by IMI, with cosmetic similarities to the Desert Eagle. Input: 1 IMI Desert Eagle, 50 cal AE. Setting fine. Output: A small cannon, weighing 4.4 pounds. The back is capable of being opened up to load one 50 cal AE round. A small trigger is located on the top of the cannon. Note: This brings a whole new meaning to a hand cannon. Will place output in the site armory. Dr. J. Input: 1 IMI Desert Eagle, 50 cal AE. Setting very fine. Output: A small clockwork bird, appearance similar to that of a bald eagle. It appears to behave similar to an actual bald eagle, except far more docile. Note: I don't know what I was expecting, but a clockwork bird was not even a possibility I thought of. On occasion, the bird seems to make varying pitch clicking in some sort of melodic pattern. Dr. J. Update. It dawned on me that the pattern of notes it plays is to that of the American National Anthem, Star Spangled Banner. I am keeping it and naming it Kennedy. Dr. J. Test 914-0176 Name Dr. Hadian Date February 17, 2018 Total items: one printed copy of a JavaScript program created by Dr. Hadian for recreational purposes. Input: the aforementioned manuscript. Setting very fine. Output: a series of origami cranes that took off as soon as the chamber was open, flying in irregular patterns. Most of the cranes collided with the doorway and fell straight to the ground, exhibiting no further anomalous properties. Note. The program input was an application similar to the app Flappy Bird. Note, that was interesting. I'll have to see about something a little more complex. Dr. Hadian. Test 914-0177. Name: Dr. Hadian. Date: February 17, 2018. Total items: one printed copy of a JavaScript program meant to be a chatbot. Input. The aforementioned manuscript. Setting very fine. Output: A small paper mache head that spoke in a choppy, occasionally non sequitur fashion. In spite of its ability to communicate, the head appears to lack true sentience. Instead, repeating back phrases taught to it and a few other basic English sentences. Note: About what I expected, I could be mistaken. But it would appear that even though SCP-914 is a mechanical device, machine code is still somehow understood by it. This would make sense, with the interpretation that it functions based on the meaning of objects, and given the explicit functionality of most programming languages, we might be able to achieve more stable results this way. Dr. Hadian Test 914-0178 Name Researcher Mick Date: February 21, 2018 Total items 1 printed copy of a JavaScript program Self-learning chatbot 5 kg of tin with 5% silver 10 grams of copper 500 grams of plastic Note, This is a continuation of the test of Dr. Hadian, Researcher Mick Input: 1 printed copy of a JavaScript program Self-learning chatbot 5 kg of stainless steel, 10 g of copper, 500 g of plastic. Setting very fine. Output Same as the last time, but made of stainless steel. 
The voice was similar to the chatbot Evie. When connected to a computer using a USB cable, it will start speaking to you similar to the chatbot Cleverbot. Further test logs awaiting O5 approval. Note, the head is supposedly sentient, according to the people who first talked to it, which could be wrong, because the program code was simple, and when used in a normal computer, it is not sentient. Test 914-0179 Name, Dr. Hadian Date, February 22, 2018 Total items One manuscript of a simple JavaScript program One fluorescent light bulb Note, the code in question was a program devised to have the bulb turn on if it was being held right side up. This test is to see if SCP-914 will comply in fabricating such an object. Input: The aforementioned materials. Setting very fine. Output: A luminescent mass, opaque, with a smoky white color. The object could be moved without difficulty, but it would not rotate in any fashion except in a way that kept it perpendicular to the floor. In all attempts to defy this property, it has proven immobile, causing the tester's hand to slip, defying gravity, and in one case, shattering the shaft of a power tool rigged to turn it over. Note, we'll chalk that one up as inconclusive. Certainly an interesting paperweight, though, Dr. Hadian. Test 914-0180 Name, Dr. Sato Date, February 24, 2018 Total items, one unloaded electric airsoft M16 rifle Input one unloaded electric airsoft M16 rifle. Setting 1 1. Output One pull action crossbow with a hollow stock. Three carbon fiber bolts with an electronic device serving as a bolt head. Note, the mass of the bolts was equal to that of the original gun stock, which appeared to be made of carbon fiber. Researcher suspects that the device serves as a tracker, but has no means of confirming it without potentially compromising the product. Input: One of said carbon fiber bolts. Setting fine. Output: A single construction bolt with some sort of mechanism on it. Note: Experimentation has revealed that the bolt is self-screwing, using what is likely a small motor. The self-screwing takes effect after light manual labor is applied. Test 914-0181. Name: Dr. Hertz. Date: February 28. 2014. Total items: four assorted recordable compact discs (CDRs) containing music samples. Input: one CDR containing a recording of Creedence Clearwater Revival's "Fortunate Son" (1969). Setting: rough. Output: one CDR containing a recording of "Fortunate Son," later identified as being covered by the Shags, a 1960s rock band known for terrible performances. Notably, the Shags were not known to have ever performed a song. Input: 1 CDR, containing a recording of Neil Diamond's I'm a Believer, 1967. Setting 1-1. One, one. Output: 1 CDR, containing a recording of the Monkees' I'm a Believer, 1967. Input: 1 CDR, containing a recording of the High School located in Class of Student Orchestra performing Pachelbel's Canon in D. Setting Fine Output 1 CDR Containing a professional orchestral rendition of Pachelbel's Canon in D. The performers were later identified as the Vienna Radio Symphony Orchestra. Note, Dr. Hertz was known to appear giddy and excited upon discovery of this result. Input 1 copy of Aeolian Memories a self-published album with 21 songs composed, written, performed on guitar, and sung by Dr. Hertz in his spare time while moonlighting as a musical artist. Setting very fine. Output: 1 CDR Upon further inspection, the music had been replaced with five tracks of complete silence, followed by the first chapters of the audiobooks Learn to Sing 101 by Karen Sermani, Teach Yourself to Play Guitar by David Brewster, and Songwriting for Dummies by Dave Austin et al. Note, at this point, Dr. Hertz was restrained 
and firmly escorted out of Research Cell 109B for attempting to damage SCP-914, and yelling about, quote, the what thinks it's being funny, unquote. He has been temporarily suspended from the SCP-914 research program for unprofessional behavior. Test 914-01A2 Name Dr. Rook Technician Date March 10, 2018 Total Items One manuscript of a JavaScript program Self-learning chatbot One manuscript of a JavaScript program Convolutional Neural Network Model One Mechanical Pocket Watch One Photo of a Bird Pica Sericea Note, the previous tests done with mechanical parts and code sections by Dr. Hadian and researcher Mick intrigued me. Dr. Rook Input One manuscript of a JavaScript program Self-learning chatbot One manuscript of a JavaScript program Convolutional neural network model One mechanical aluminum and silver pocket watch One USB One photo of a bird Pica sericea Setting very fine. Output: A mechanical bird roughly the size of a large pocket watch. Resembled a Korean magpie in shape. The bird seemed to be made with a mix of clockwork and realistic metal plumage. By some unknown mechanism, it could hover for brief periods, roughly 45 seconds in the air, though its base material, aluminum and silver, should have prohibited it from doing so. It could not speak in this form though it displayed considerable intelligence and responded to people speaking to it. When connected to a computer via USB cable, the bird was able to speak through the computer speakers. It was capable of speech comparable to an eight-year-old child's, though speech patterns significantly improved after several conversations. It acted remarkably similar to a live magpie. Other than the mechanical bird, three folded sheets of blank paper were found in the output chamber. Close analysis revealed that they had no anomalous properties, placed in item storage. Note, I'm keeping the bird for some more research on how 914 could be used to create automated objects. One of the first tests recorded included a clockwork bird, so that's where this came from. Dr. Hadrian was right. Think of the possibilities, Dr. Rook. Note, no matter how much Dr. Rook's Robbie resembles a young child during communication, the result of this test has not yet been verified to be fully sentient. Test 914-0183 Name, Dr. Joe Date, March 13, 2018 Total Items Three white paper origami swans, weighing 29 grams each. Input One paper swan, setting rough. Output One crumpled piece of white paper, weighing 29 grams. Input one paper swan, setting 1 1. Output One paper fortune teller, popular with young school children with no writing on it, weighing 29 grams. Input One paper swan, setting fine. Output One paper model of Cygnus Buccinator, Trumpeter Swan, the size and mass of the original origami swan. However, this model is entirely anatomically correct to Cygnus Buccinator in every way with some organ systems being made of seemingly impossibly thin layers of paper. The model displays no anomalous properties. Note, interesting. 914 created a model of my personal favorite species of swan from the original paper one. Sentience or coincidence? I need to do more tests, but first make sure that model is saved in fragile, non-anomalous item storage. It could be useful at a later date. Dr. Joe Test 914-0184 Name Dr. O'Brien Date March 25, 2018 Total Items Three different pieces of communication on paper medium Input One type thesis titled An Experimental Study on the Stress Limits of Metals and Corrosive Liquids as submitted by D914-29 Setting Very Fine Output One type thesis titled a complete experimental study on the stress limits of metals in various environments. A review of the output by the subject and subsequently studied by appropriate personnel revealed no anomalous properties. 
The output contains research on several experiments not included in the original input, with suggestions on how to vastly improve the strength of metals in a wide variety of situations. A review of the output is being conducted by the Facilities and Engineering Department to test to see if these findings can improve security within the Foundation. Input. One page of sheet music from Ellen's third song by Schubert, as submitted by D914-86. Setting very fine. Output. Tiny, 5cm by 5cm or 2cm origami music box. Upon opening the box, a clear melody identified as the song, Ellen's third song, could be heard by all researchers in the area facility, including those who should be well out of range of being able to hear. Subject D914-86 began singing along with the music, despite not showing any previous indication of knowing either Latin or taking singing lessons. After the conclusion of the piece, subsequent experiments confirmed that she could not sing. Input. One copy of How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, as submitted by D914-77. Setting very fine. Output. One slightly warmer copy of How to Win Friends and Influence People. D914-77 was sent back to their cell and monitored, showing no anomalous behavior after a week of review. Note, D-914-77 and two guards have been reported as missing. Security footage shows the guards opening several doors and escorting D-914-77 off the premises, and driving them to a nearby restaurant. When a security team was sent there to retrieve the subject, a conflict began between the patrons of the restaurant and the security team, with the patrons refusing to allow the security team close to D-914-77. An order was given with O4 clearance to destroy the location, as a possible mimetic anomaly may have occurred. Although the remains of D914-77 have not been positively identified, security footage suggests that no one escaped the building prior to its demolition. Local media have been alerted to the fact that the destruction was caused by a broken gas main in the restaurant's kitchen. Note, a full mimetic screening will be made whenever media provided by SCP-914 is consumed. Please refer to Incident Report 914-IR-6187 for further details. Test 914-0185 Name Dr. Mannheim Date March 25, 2018 Total Items One USB drive with a text file containing the source code of Creeper. Note, Creeper was one of the first computer viruses ever made, and the systems it operated on are now 100% obsolete. Organic materials have been intentionally omitted from this test, in case SCP-914 decides to translate that into an actual biological virus. A hazardous materials team was on standby to make sure nothing that came out of 914 presented a threat to the facility or its occupants. Input: Creeper source code on USB drive. Setting very fine. Output: A metallic figure, green in color and vaguely phallic. The object self-destructed upon being removed from SCP-914, in a manner comparable to a commercial firework. The remains have shown no anomalous properties. Note: Well, that was anticlimactic. Dr. Mannheim. Test: 914-0186. Name: Dr. Q. Date: March 25th. 2018. Total items. One camera. Broadcasting to a monitor. Input. One camera. Setting 1-1. One one. Output. 17 seconds after entering, video feed showed a series of gears before abruptly cutting off. Regain contact about 21 seconds before leaving the output door, but from a different camera. Test 914-0187. Name Dr. Q. Date. March 25, 2018 Total Items 1 Mirror Input 1 Mirror Setting 1-1 one one. Output A similar mirror in a different shape No, that was disappointing. I'll try it on fine. Dr. Q Input 1 Mirror Setting fine Output 1 Mirror reflecting 100% of light Input Previous Mirror Setting very fine Output Dr. Q went blind for about five minutes. Object destroyed. 
Input: One blank sheet of paper. Setting very fine. Output: Top half of SCP-571. Incinerated. Test: 914-0188. Name: Dr. Western. Date: March 25, 2018. Total items: Two USB drives containing the first 500 digits of pi. Input: One USB drive is mentioned above. Setting: 1-1. Output: A USB drive containing 500 seemingly random digits with no apparent pattern. Input: One USB drive is mentioned above. Setting very fine. Output: A USB drive containing an unknown number of digits. It is currently theorized that this number is Graham's number due to the USB drive storage size. Test: 914-0189. Name: Researcher M. Enselman. Date: March 25, 2018. Total items: three copies of Mein Kampf by Adolf Hitler. Text in the original German. Input: a copy of Mein Kampf. Setting 1-1. Output: a book titled How to Make Friends, Influence People, and Then Murder Them. Subtitled: How to Be a Dickhead for Dummies. Text mostly consists of hyperbolic German profanity. Input. A copy of Mein Kampf. Setting fine. Output. A pile of ashes. Input. A copy of Mein Kampf. Setting very fine. Output. An animate 45 cm tall origami caricature of Adolf Hitler. Object does not appear to be sapient, but is able to vocalize a non-stop stream of threats and boasts. Voice confirmed to be that of the original Adolf Hitler. Object also noted to often clumsily fall over or bump into walls while goose-stepping about. Object is harmless and mildly regenerative. The origami will refold if disrupted, and can be kicked by researchers in the form of stress management at their discretion. Note, outside of the testing area, please. I should not need to specify that. Dr. Baratos Test 914-0190 Name Assistant Researcher Kendrick Date April 13, 2018 Total Items 10 grams of table salt Input 5 grams of table salt Setting fine Output Salt is compressed into the shape of a garden snail Cornu aspersum It broke apart when attempting to remove it from the booth Input 5 grams of table salt Setting very fine. Output: A garden snail composed of salt that was alive for approximately five seconds before breaking apart. Test 914-0191. Name: Researcher Rianti S. Date: April 22, 2018. Total items: Four two-cavity klystron power amplifier. Input: One two-cavity klystron power amplifier. Setting course. Output: A disassembled klystron power amplifier. Size of individual component consistent with the dimension of original device. Input: One two-cavity klystron power amplifier. Setting 1-1. Output: One traveling wave tube (TWT) power amplifier. Testing reveals identical performance to original klystron power amplifier. Further examination pending to determine any anomalous qualities. Input: One two-cavity klystron power amplifier. Setting fine. Output: A device comprised of complex structure within presumably a resonating cavity, along with an electron source and output port on opposite side of each other. A flawed judgment of the device's structural integrity leads to the partial destruction of the device due to mishandling. The function or the capability of the device remains unknown. Input: One two-cavity klystron power amplifier. Setting very fine. Output: One ornate reflex klystron oscillator. The size of the device is notably smaller than original input. The device is adorned with an unusual amount of ornament, depicting patterns consistent with GOI-004C, Maxwellus Church iconography. Power output and bandwidth of the device remains within original specification. 
Test 914-0192 Name Dr. Katz Date April 25, 2018 Total Items 1 Brandless TV Remote Input 1 Brandless TV Remote Setting Very Fine Output Output A TV remote that when pointed at an object, activated the corresponding control. Note, don't use the fast-forward control in any more D-Class. We can pause them if they're being particularly annoying. Maybe mute them? Dr. Katz Test 914-0193 Name Dr. Zaxkir Date April 26, 2018 Total Items One page of instructions for a kinetoglyph Input One page of instructions for a kinetoglyph Setting Fine Output a small instruction manual displaying instructions for creating multiple complex kinetoglyphs. 87% of the instructions are not physically able to be performed by humans. Note, I will gladly put this to use. Dr. Zaxkir Test 914-0194 Name Dr. Teori Date April 26, 2018 Total Items one copy of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim One USB drive containing the entirety of the manga JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part V Bento Ario Input One copy of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Setting 1-1 Output One copy of the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion Input One aforementioned USB drive Setting fine Output one USB drive containing an animated adaptation of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part V, Vento Ario, with English subtitles. Note, I'm just gonna keep this for myself. For research, of course. Dr. Teori Test 914-0195 Name Professor Snyder Date April 26, 2018 Total Items 5 Yellow Cavendish Bananas Input one banana. Setting rough. Output. A small pile of dry banana flour. Input. One banana. Setting coarse. Output. Banana puree. Input. One banana. Setting one one. Output. One plantain. Input. One banana. Setting fine. Output. Fried banana chips. Input. One banana. Setting very fine. Output: A banana-shaped bar of yellow soap. Surface feels slippery even when dry. Test 914-0196. Name: Professor Snyder. Date: April 26, 2018. Total items: Five 500 milliliter samples of SCP-999 slime. Note: SCP-999 was at first eager to donate samples when asked, although it was visibly nervous when presented with a syringe, requiring gentle reassurance and calming before cooperating. Samples were extracted successfully without further incident, though whether or not SCP-999 feels pain is still unknown. Input: 500 ml sample of SCP-999 poured directly into input chamber. Setting rough. Output: Cloud of orange-colored gas which quickly dissipated into the air. No harmful effects were found, though Professor Snyder noted it smelled like burning hair. Input: 500 ml sample of SCP-999 Setting course Output: Pile of waxy, crystalline orange granules, with a mild orange scent. Chemical analysis identified it as flavored sucrose, aka rock candy. When tasted, Granules were found to have an extremely unpleasant flavor described as overwhelmingly disgustingly sweet, with an alcohol-like undertaste. Input: 500 ml sample of SCP-999 Setting 1-1 Output: 500 ml of orange liquid, with the viscosity of water. Extremely greasy to the touch. Became sticky when dried. Smelled mildly of peanuts. Input. 500 ml sample of SCP-999 Setting fine Output A frozen block of SCP-999 slime 
Attempting to melt back to liquid form resulted in a pile of orange sludge, much thicker and more adhesive than before. Further heating resulted in discovering its napalm-like qualities. Input: 500 ml sample of SCP-999 Setting very fine. Output: A small spherical blob of translucent, azure-colored slime, roughly 12 cm in diameter, with a strong, garlic-like odor. Found to be mobile and sentient, and capable of making gurgling, chirping vocalizations similar to SCP-999, but at a much deeper pitch. The entity, designated E-999-A, was immediately hostile to all staff, attempting to either leap upon researchers' faces or headbutt their shins via rolling across the floor at high speed, though its small size and mass prevented it from doing more than mild bruising. Addendum E-999-A was eventually contained and presented to SCP-999, with the assumption that this was its offspring, and that SCP-999 could teach it to become more docile. SCP-999 instead reacted with immediate hostility, attacking E-999-A with its pseudopods while E-999-A rolled around SCP-999, emitting loud growling and snarling noises while dodging. SCP-999 finally eliminated E-999-A roughly two minutes later, via engulfing it with two pseudopods, rapidly dissolving E-999-A inside its body similar to how SCP-999 digests its meals. No change in SCP-999's color or demeanor following the incident has been noted. However, it is the first and thus only time that SCP-999 has ever reacted to anything with hostility or violence. Mentioning E-999-A to SCP-999 resulted in immediately ignoring whoever speaks to it, often by wandering off to play with a nearby object or person. Further research involving SCP-999 slime is temporarily suspended, save for researchers with at least level 3 clearance, and any experiments involving SCP-999 and SCP-914 are completely prohibited. Note, Professor Snyder is currently facing disciplinary action due to violation of biological safety protocol. The next one I catch is losing their clearance indefinitely. Dr. Baratos Test. 914-0197 Name Dr. Pattinson Date April 27, 2018 Total Items A Pencil and a Sketchbook Input A Pencil and a Sketchbook First page has the word mouse handwritten on it. Setting 1-1 Output A Pencil and a Sketchbook First page has the drawing of the cartoon character Mickey Mouse. Input: A pencil and a sketchbook. Second page has the word bird handwritten on it. Setting 1-1. Output: A pencil and a sketchbook. Second page has the drawing of the cartoon character Tweety from the Looney Tunes. Input: A pencil and a sketchbook. Third page has the word girl handwritten on it. Setting fine. Output: A pencil and a sketchbook. Third page has a detailed drawing of a young girl smiling, accompanied by the aforementioned cartoon character Tweety and Mickey Mouse. Note, Dr. Pattinson requested to temporarily stop the testing and was visibly distressed. Pattinson claimed it resembles his deceased daughter who enjoyed the characters. After a while, he insisted to continue after recollecting himself. Input: A pencil and a sketchbook. Fourth page has 914 handwritten on it. Setting very fine. Output: A heavily used pencil and a sketchbook. The rest of the pages of the sketchbook were drawn on to create a flipbook-style animation of gears turning. Test 914-0198. Name: Dr. Hadian. Date: April 28, 2018. Total items: Tax Form 1040A. Blank. Input: Aforementioned tax form. Setting very fine. Output: A crumpled up piece of paper. Dr. Hadian reported rapid onset migraines on attempting to retrieve it, possibly due to anomalous properties. Input: Previous output. Setting rough. Output: A fine spray of sawdust, along with an unidentified black smoke that dissipated quickly. Remains showed no anomalous properties. No, that was cathartic, Dr. Hadian. 
Test 914-0199 Name Dr. Nysmith Date April 29, 2018 Total items 1 credit card and 1 piece of paper Input Dr. Nysmith's credit card Setting very fine Output A similar credit card covered with a series of unidentified corporate insignias and the phrase Rank LF Infinite Money Privileges no. Dr. Nysmith, I don't think I need to remind you that SCP-914 is not to be used for personal financial gain, but it seems I was wrong. Consider this an official warning, Dr. Coltrane. Input: A printout of the above note from Dr. Coltrane. Setting very fine. Output: A printout of a note reading, Dr. Nysmith, I didn't even think of using SCP-914 for personal financial gain. But that seems like a solid idea. Consider this official permission to reap the fruits of your labor. 0511 No. Guess I have no choice but to keep the new card. I have written permission on file if anyone has any questions. Dr. Nysmith Test 914-0200 Name Quantum Computing Researcher Ling and IT Technician Sharma Date April 30, 2018 Total Items 2 2048 Qubit QPUs Quantum Processing Unit Manufactured by D-Wave Systems Input 1 QPU Setting 1-1 Output 1-2048 bead abacus constructed from silicon, aluminum, and ceramic. The beads are arranged in four columns of ten rows, with 32 silicon beads in each cell. When a bead in one cell is moved, a random assortment of other beads will move as well. No distinct pattern has been found in these movements. Input: 1 QPU Setting fine Output 1 2048 QPU with output binary and output analog printed on the top left and top right corners of the chip. Input binary and input analog printed on the bottom left and right corners of the chip. The binary input channel only accepts data in the form of digital signals like document files, audio files, network data, and computer programs. The analog input channel only accepts direct signals from radio, voltage, microphones, and signal generators. The new QPU appears to convert input data in a similar way to SCP-914 in the 1-1 setting. Only one input channel will accept data at a time. The corresponding output channel will output data as a digital signal, file, network stream, or data stream or an analog signal, audio signal, waveform, or radio wave. Test 914-0201 Name 2 slash Researcher Rook Date April 30, 2018 Total items 3 unwashed wetland area field suits Input 1 field suit Setting course Output one unwashed field suit, two sizes larger than input, with tears along the torso and left leg. Input: one field suit. Setting one one. Output: one U.S. CDC hazmat suit. Suit was moderately radioactive. Testing briefly halted for decontamination procedures. Input: one field suit. Setting fine. Output: one unwashed field suit. Name tag changed to reflect 3 slash clearance. Note, SCP-914 is not a valid designee for letters of recommendation, Rook. Mr. Johnson, Site-19 Human Resources Liaison Test 914-0202 Date, April 30, 2018 Total items, 3 ships in a bottle Input, 1 ship in a bottle Setting course Output A pile of glass shards and a pile of wood shavings and a small pile of tattered cloth Input 
One ship in a bottle. Setting 1-1. One -one. Output. A wooden bottle. Analysis of the contents inside indicates that there is a model ship composed of glass contained within the bottle. Input. One ship in a bottle. Setting very fine. Output. A glass bottle that contains a small model of the International Station. The model appears to be constructed from the same materials as the ship in the original ship in a bottle. Note, I'm surprised it didn't fill one of the bottles with water, or any other liquid for that matter. Dr. Westron Test 914-0203 Name Dr. Rodriguez Date April 30, 2018 Total Items A complete DVD set of The Office, U.S. series Input The complete DVD set Setting fine. Output: A mosaic portrait of Dwight Schrute, composed of DVD fragments. Test 914-0208. Name: Janitor Kurt. Date: April 30, 2018. Total items: 50 kilograms of assorted wires, cables, power cords, and Christmas lights jumbled together in a ball. Input: The ball of cables. Setting course. Output: One jumbled ball of copper wire, and one similarly jumbled ball of hollow rubber and plastic cable. The two balls of wires and cables have the same jumbled configuration as the input. One pile of about 60 light bulb filaments, 60 light bulb sockets, and 60 bulbs of various colors. This… This is not what I wanted. Kurt Test 914-0205 Name Dr. Hadian Date April 30, 2018 Total Items Four sheets of paper, each depicting a state of Conway's Game of Life Input One of the aforementioned papers Setting rough Output A spray of black and white confetti, conforming to perfect squares Input One of the aforementioned papers Setting 1-1 one -one. Output a sheet of paper depicting another state of the game. Examination shows that it's the next step of the input. Input: One of the aforementioned papers. Setting fine. Output: A sheet of paper with an ongoing game of life culture growing on it. The culture resolved itself approximately 18 hours after testing concluded. Input: One of the aforementioned papers. Setting very fine. Output. An amorphous blob of wood pulp, which reacts to tactile stimuli by attempting to engulf the object touching it, and which has successfully reproduced twice at the time of this writing. This product is awaiting possible SCP classification, and has been securely contained for study. Test 914-0206 Name Agent Mickelson Date April 30, 2018 Total Items 5 Foundation Standard Issue Clandestine Audio Recorders Note, These recorders are used during infiltration missions in the GOIs. They are small and easy to conceal within various clothing and objects. Input: 1 Audio Recorder Setting Rough Output: A pile of plastic kernels 1 small copper cube Several small piles of metal powders Input. One audio recorder. Setting course. Output. One fully disassembled audio recorder. Solder used for the circuit board found in wire form. Input. One audio recorder. Setting 1-1. One -one. Output. One audio emitter. Single tone that changes with every activation of the device. Input. One audio recorder. Setting fine. Output. One small round plastic disc, radius 1 cm, height 7 mm, with no battery slot. Recorded audio, 7 days max, can be downloaded from the disc by connecting the top and bottom side of the disc to the two wires of a microphone cable. The object records all audible vibrations in a 50 meter sphere around the object, including sounds beyond soundproof walls within the radius. Input. One audio recorder. Setting very fine. Output. 
One device, with the same exterior form as a Foundation standard issue clandestine radio recorder. The device functions as a regular Foundation recorder, but instead of recording local audio, the device records a random, currently ongoing conversation between two or more people. No distance limit to this effect has been found. The device is currently used as a global monitoring tool. Test 914-0207 Name Dr. C. Jung Research Assistant A. Y. Lichko Date April 30, 2018 Total Items 5 Foundation Class C Amnestic Injectors Input 1 Injector Setting Rough Output a small metal cube, aluminum, a pile of white powder, the active ingredient for amnestics, and a puddle of liquid that ignited into a blue flame upon touch, presumed to be the inactive carrier fluid. Input: One injector. Setting course. Output: One disassembled injector in a cloud of in gaseous form. Note. A system was brought back up to speed regarding the test with SCP-914 after a short rest. Jung Input: 1 Injector Setting 1-1 Output: 1 Decorative Aluminum Floral Brute Cotharanthus Roseus The sin of which causes the subject to lose all recollection of events proceeding for at least one day. This scent is immeasurable and undetectable by anything other than humans, and only works at a close range. About 50 cm. Note: Assistant Lichko has been given a hazmat suit for future testing. Jung. Input: One injector. Setting fine. Output: One Foundation Class C amnestic injector. The object is mostly unchanged, except for the two rotary dials that have been added to the bottom of the injector. The dials appear to indicate an exact range of recollection to a race, scaling between one minute and 30 days. Input: 1 Injector Setting very fine Output Note, this object, if it even is an object, is a cognito hazard. It erases all the subject's memory when it views the item. A cognito hazard containment team has removed it from SCP-914's output chamber. Research Assistant A. Y. Lichko has been transferred to the infirmary. Jung Test 914-0208 Name Dr. Lachlan O'Hehir Lt. Reuben Greentree Date April 30, 2018 Total Items 3 pairs of 3D glasses Glasses are polarized 3D glasses, which is the design that modern cinemas use. Input 1 pair of 3D glasses Setting 1-1 Output one pair of 3D glasses, except with a brand logo on the side, Samsung. Still works as expected, with minor differences in color, compared to original. Input: One pair of 3D glasses. Setting fine. Output: One pair of 3D glasses with no obvious difference. When put on, however, the viewer sees any 2D image as a 3D image, and sees the 3D world with a more stretched field of view. Note, using the 3D glasses in the already 3D world has no use. It just makes things look marginally further away than where they should be. Input: One pair of 3D glasses. Setting very fine. Output: One mask with lenses over the eyes. When put on, the lenses redirect to align themselves with the viewer's eyes. The viewer experiences the world with an added dimension. 2D objects, like shadows or pictures, become 3D. 3D objects irregulate and create a second version of themselves within themselves, resulting in interior and exterior shadowing. Objects will grow a fourth dimension rather than adding on to the XYZ axis. The glasses merge a second XYZ axis into the original. The two merged axes create one bigger axis of XXYZZ. The second y-axis is merged with the original, although any two axes can merge. This resulted in many Class Ds who were tested on to feel extreme nausea and headaches. One account that lasted over 15 minutes with the glasses on, average time is 3 minutes before the subject pulls out, 
said she saw sharp, paper-thin objects that were piercing through solid matter. This is presumably 1D objects gaining depth. Note, items were put into storage, as they may be of use in the future. Dr. O'Hehir Test 914-0209 Name Chief Security Officer Wright Date April 30, 2018 Total items 5 outdated copies of paperback handbooks, 24 pages long that were once provided to new recruits of site security teams. Note, God, these things were awful back in the day. I have a box full of them, and I am glad to put them to use. Chief Security Officer Wright Input One Handbook Setting 1-1 Output Handbook was rewritten to correct spelling errors, provide effective advice, and remove unnecessary information, which left six pages blank. The cover depicts an ink illustration of a security guard. The back of the handbook has text that provides recommendations for other orientation material. Input: One handbook. Setting 1-1. Output: Ten brochures that contain summaries and outdated text from the orientation manual regarding lockdown procedures. Notably, all brochures end with, quote, If everything fails, go to the gate, unquote. The meaning of this statement is currently unknown. Input: One handbook. Setting fine. Output: Each page depicts illustrations of contained SCP objects and brief advice to survive an encounter. Input: One handbook. Setting fine. Output: Handbook is rewritten in Mandarin. Input: One handbook. Setting very fine. Output: 22 animate origami instances depicting security personnel, and one instance which would take the form of an SCP object. They are incapable of vocalization and appears to be sapient, but requires further testing. Instances would attempt to perform a scenario of a containment breach, and demonstrate the appropriate actions in response. During the scenario, one instance would perform gestures towards nearby personnel to direct their attention to the actions being taken. Test 914-0210 Name Senior Researcher Rook Date April 30, 2018 Total Items A packet of Field Biology's internal memos at Site-19, classified 2-slash-bio Input The Memo Packet Setting 1-1 Output Several mission logs from Marshall Carter and Dark's Huntsman Assassination Division. Foundation moles in MC and D confirm the log's veracity. Note, there's obvious espionage potential here. Let's see how consistently now one four produces useful information. Senior Researcher Rook. Test 914-0211. Name: Senior Researcher Rook. Date: April 30th, 2018. Total items: 50 memo packets, as from the previous test. Input: One memo packet. Setting 1-1. Output: Quarterly actuarial reports from the Hartford's branch. Input: One memo packet. Setting 1-1. Output: CIA interrogation reports from Black Site Deep Water. Test 3 through 28 omitted. Full testing log located in Supplementary Document LOG-914-A8-B6851 Input One Memo Packet Setting 1-1 Output Anomalous Art History Department Notes on Classified 4 slash Note Testing suspended due to information security issues. Class C amnestics dispensed to Rook and other testing personnel. Note, I am surprised 914 produced a more strictly classified information packet on the 1-1 setting. I suppose it has a low opinion of Anarch history. Senior Researcher Rook Test 914-0212 Name, Researcher Blaze Date, May 1, 2018 Total Items, 3 General Incandescent Light Bulbs Input, 1 Incandescent Light Bulb Setting 1-1 Output 1 fluorescent light bulb 
When applied to a power source and turned on, it produces a dim greenish light. Note, D-Class personnel who were instructed to enter the room with the bulb applied reported a general feeling of uneasiness and nausea. Further testing required. Input: One incandescent light bulb. Setting rough. Output: A powdery sand-like substance. When touched, personnel describe it feeling like quote powdered sugar unquote. When the material is placed in a standard Ziploc bag and shaken, a bright yellowish light is produced, similar to that of a standard incandescent light bulb. Note, request to keep this bag as a personal light source in case my flashlight dies. Note, request approved. Dr. Veritas. Input: One incandescent light bulb. Setting very fine. Output: One anthropomorphic humanoid light bulb. Object vocalized the staff in English with a slight German accent. Claimed to be Thomas Edison, who is erroneously credited with inventing the first light bulb. Note: This thing will not stop talking about its quote great in scientific achievements unquote to everyone it meets. Request to gain as much information as possible about its existence, and then smash it with a sledgehammer. Researcher Blaze. Note: Just incinerated Blaze. Dr. Baratos Test 914-0213 Name Dr. Hadian Date May 2, 2018 Total Items 5 Packets of Instant Ramen, including seasoning 5 Stainless Steel Pots, filled with approximately half a liter of water each Note, This experiment is a further exploration of the 1-1 function. No products from this experiment are to be consumed. Input: One set of assembled items. Setting 1-1. Output: One uncooked pot of gruel. The noodles appear to have lost integrity, leaving an aqueous grain solution. Input: One set of assembled items. Setting 1-1. Output: A pot of cooked noodles and a cloud of steam. The steel pot was hot to the touch. Examination showed that the noodles had been overcooked and would not be particularly pleasant fare. Speculated to be about as desirable as consuming the raw packet. One set of assembled items. Setting 1-1. Output. A stainless steel pot, containing noodles, but no water. Produced sloshing sounds upon being picked up, and the mass was the same. The pot was also slightly bigger, suggesting SCP-914 added an internal chamber that now stores the water. Confirmed through use of power tools for puncture. Input: One set of assembled items. Setting 1-1. Output: An uncooked pot of pasta. The overall composition remains the same, but the shapes of the noodles have been changed to resemble macaroni. Contents were also marginally more soggy than usual, but it's not currently known if this is due to any action on SCP-914's part. Input. One set of assembled items. Setting 1-1. Output. The same set of items, unaltered. Note. Guess it got kinda tired of this exercise, huh? Dr. Hadian. Test 914-0214 Janitor Kurt Date April 5, 2018 Total Items One box full of old keys from before the site switch over to electronic locks. Input Roughly one kilo of assorted keys. Setting rough. Output Cubes of various metals stacked in the form of a padlock. Input One large brass key. Setting 1-1. Output One brass padlock. Locked. Unknown lock pinning. Note, a key had never found a lock for, now a lock with no key. Kurt. Input. One keychain. Seven keys total, plus one key ring. Setting fine. Output. Key ring with TSA. Transportation Security Administration of the USA. Issued travel bag opening tools. Note, these will help with opening the bags and lost and found. Kurt. Input. The former access key to the janitor's closet. 
Setting very fine. Output. One metal credit card. Visa number 4. 8. Belonging to JP. The CEO of Amazon. Note. I guess money can buy you access. Kurt. Note. You're not keeping that. Chief Security Officer Wright. Test 914-0215 Name Dr. Hadian Date May 5, 2018 Total Items A piece of paper, depicting various proofs and postulates in simple symbol form. Input The aforementioned paper. Setting very fine. Output A complex cellular diagram. Basic deciphering has shown the original postulates are still present, along with no fewer than fifteen others with meanings that are not readily apparent. Secured for further study. Note, requesting a copy of this for personal records, once we know there's no memetic effects tied to it, Dr. Hadian. Note, take it. That thing gives me a headache. Dr. Veritas. Test 914-0216 Name, Dr. F. Bascom Date, May 5, 2018 Total Items Four granite stones, two kilograms each. One calonite geode. Input: One granite stone, two kilograms. Setting: Rough. Output: Very fine sand, sorted in piles of identical minerals. Input: One granite stone, two kilograms. Setting: Coarse. Output: One hollow stone and one extracted seashell fossil. Note. How did it do this without breaking the original rock? Input: One calonite geode. Setting: One one. Output: One opal geode of the same mass and size. Note: Turning boring gray rock into a beautiful opal. I'm liking this thing. Input: One granite stone. Two kilograms. Setting: Fine. Output: One miniature volcano with a single lava flow. 1100 degrees Celsius. Object cooled rapidly and the lava hardened in seconds. Note, I'll need to test this with a larger rock later. I should also make some x-rays of this volcano to determine its internal composition. Input, 1 granite stone, 2 kilograms. Setting very fine. Output, 1 miniature replica of the Mount Rushmore National Memorial. However, the faces have been changed. George Washington with Andrew Johnson, Thomas Jefferson with Bill Clinton, Theodore Roosevelt with an unknown female, and Abraham Lincoln with current sitting President Donald J. Trump. The significance of these alterations is unclear. Note, I don't understand. Who is that woman? A future president? The statue is very detailed, though. Test 914-0217 Name Researcher Blay Date May 5, 2018 Total Items Two pairs of standard UV protection sunglasses Input One pair of sunglasses Setting rough Output One tinted pane of glass dimensions 50 by 50 by 3 mm When pointed at a light and looked through, the pane generates extreme hallucinations from the light source. Such hallucinations have included dragons and smoke monsters to birds with blue flaming wings and horns like a goat. Hallucinations vary from subject to subject, and seem to have no correlation to the viewer's mental state or personality. When the pain is turned away from the source, the hallucinations immediately cease and reset until turned back to the light. Note, multiple D-Class subjects have reported seeing a deer with enormous antlers and crazy floating orbs when looked through the pane of glass. Investigation to a possible connection to SCP-2845 is underway. Input: One pair of sunglasses. Setting 1-1. Output: One pair of aviator-style sunglasses with mirrored lenses. Mimetic effects occur when a person views another individual wearing the sunglasses. Subjects will exclaim and persist that the glasses are the most extremely stylish and hip they have ever seen. Further testing is in order. Note, definitely the most sexy pair of sunglasses I've ever seen in my life. I have to keep them if I'm ever going to get a date. Researcher Blay. Note, 
Sure, Blay. Of course I'm going to let you keep an anomalous object for your personal gain. I stored it in the anomalous item wing for study. Don't ask where. I'm not telling you. Dr. Veritas Test 914-0218 Name Foundation Mathematician's Cantor and Hausdorff Date May 12, 2018 Total Items Three Printouts of the Banaktarsky Paradox Theorem and Three Iron Spears Three Kilograms Each Input One Printout and One Spear Setting 1-1 Output One Printout Describing Knot Theory and one iron trefoil knot. Note, the knot has no apparent seams or welding spots. This is beautifully made. Cantor. Input. One printout and one spear. Setting fine. Output. One collection of five intersecting tetrahedra forming an akaisahedron with a paper origami woven between the tetrahedra to spell out one of the numbers 1 through 20 on each of the 20 akaisahedron faces. The 1 and 20 faces are inked completely black. The other numbers are white paper. Rolling the D20 had no observable anomalous effects. Note, 3 kilos something makes for a heavy D20. Cantor. Note, we'll use it for special occasions. Hausdorff. Input, 1 printout and 1 spear. Setting very fine. Output, 1 origami Klein bottle. Inscribed with SCP-3669-2. Function unknown. Awaiting O5 approval for the creation of an SCP-3669-1 to discern the meaning of the inscriptions. One or two iron spears. It is unclear if the spears are truly two separate objects, or one object simultaneously in multiple locations. The spears are solid only to matter, that is not the other spear. They phase through each other when they touch. The sum mass of the spears when separate is 6 kg. When fully phased into each other, the sum mass is 3 kg. Note, I don't understand these arrows. And why is the paper climb bottle shaped? Cantor. Note, I'm still unsure if we solved the Banaktarsky paradox with these iron orbs. I do know that they are giving me a headache. Hausdorff. Test 914-0219 Name Researcher Thompson Date May 12, 2018 Total Items Three character sheets for the tabletop role-playing game Dungeons & Dragons 3.5th edition Filled out by Researcher Thompson Input One character sheet for the tabletop role-playing game Dungeons & Dragons 3.5th edition Filled out by Researcher Thompson Setting 1-1 Output A log detailing the characters' adventures, including their victories in combat, interactions with other characters, skills they've learned, and treasure they found. Input One character sheet for the tabletop role-playing game Dungeons & Dragons 3.5th edition, filled out by Researcher Thompson. Setting fine One character sheet for the tabletop role-playing game Call of Cthulhu Edition 5.5 Researcher Thompson, who is familiar with the game, remarked the character design to be highly creative and original. Input One character sheet for the tabletop role-playing game Dungeons & Dragons 3.5th Edition Filled out by Researcher Thompson Setting very fine Output A sheet of paper promoting the non-existent tabletop role-playing game Fear in the Foundation, 1st Edition the paper repeatedly makes claims about the fun factor of the game, but gives little information as to its actual content. Upon reading the entirety of the paper, subjects undergo an out-of-body experience in which they perceive themselves to exist in the game world. Based on subjects' reports, elements of the game are taken from several different tabletop role-playing games. The game is also noted to contain several Foundation and SCP-related characters items, and locations. Subjects will exit the state upon either dying in the game or defeating the final villain. Note, I gave this a try and ended up seeing SCP-096 in space as a rolling a 1 on stealth. If you don't hear from me within 5 minutes, I blow my brains out. Researcher Jacobson Note, Researcher Jacobson was later found dead in the anomalous item storage wing. Access to Fear in the Foundation 
now requires supervision of at least one armed member of site security, in case of visual hazards. 05-6 Test 914-0220 Name Dr. Lovelace Date May 25, 2018 Total Items 1 AIC Artificial Intelligence Construct Server with Integrated Battery Pack and Alexander.AIC Preloaded 1 Dell Brand LCD Monitor 1 Dell Brand US Keyboard and one Dell brand PC mouse. Input: The AIC server, monitor, keyboard, and mouse. Setting 1-1. Output: One IBM branded server. One battery pack external connected to the server. One Samsung branded OLED monitor. One IBM branded keyboard with integrated trackball. A copy of Glacon.AIC was found running on the server. Transcript. Dr. Lovelace. Alexander, are you ready? Yes, let's do this. Turning the key. Let's see what we got. I'm ready to begin the test, Doctor. Please continue. What? Who are you? I am Glacon.AIC version 1.9.4, a second generation artificial intelligence construct. Note. Right. Dr. Lovelace. Test 914-0221. Name: Dr. Hazard Date: May 23, 2018 Total Items 1 AP Calculus Textbook Input: 1 AP Calculus Textbook Setting Rough Output: Large shreds of paper and plastic in a pile Note: What? Don't look at me like that! School's over! Dr. Hazard Note: Hazard? If I catch you using 9 boards or personal paper shredder again, I'm reassigning you to site. Yes, the one in Antarctica, Dr. Baratos. Test 914-0222. Name: Researcher Bunsen. Date: May 23, 2018. Total items: six sets of DVDs, each set containing all 94 episodes of Himitsu no Akuchan (1969-1970) and all copied from DVDs imported directly from Japan. Two Japanese-English dictionaries. One printout of an article from Honey'sAnime.com Input One set of Himitsu no Aku-chan DVDs. Setting 1-1 Output The DVDs now contain all 109 episodes of Sally the Witch, 1966-1967. Input One set of Himitsu no Aku-chan DVDs. Setting 1-1 Output Two smaller sets of DVDs, each containing all 52 episodes of Magic Angel Creamy Mammy, 1983-1984. Note, I won't say no to free anime, but this isn't quite what I was looking for. P. Bunsen Input One set of Himitsu no Aku-chan DVDs. Setting fine. Output the episodes have been reanimated in the style of the 1988-1989 reboot. Input: One set of Himitsu no Aku-chan DVDs. Setting very fine. Output: The episodes have been reanimated in the style of the 1998-1999 reboot. Input: One set of Himitsu no Aku-chan DVDs. One Japanese English dictionary. Setting 1-1. Output. One volume of the original Himitsu no Aku-chan manga in Japanese. One set of DVDs containing a video curriculum on how to learn Japanese. Input: One set of Himitsu no Aku-chan DVDs. One Japanese English dictionary. One printout of an article from Honey'sAnime.com on how to create fan subs of anime. Setting very fine. Output: DVDs and dictionary remain unchanged. Printout of Honey'sAnime.com article replaced with a printout of an article from TheMoves.com entitled, Five Reasons No One Ever Helps You Out When You Ask For Favors. Spoiler, it's you. Test 914-0223 Name, Dr. Gold Date, May 23, 2018 Total Items One Interlocking Metal Ring Puzzle Input one interlocking metal ring puzzle. Setting course. Output. The ring puzzle. 
fully disassembled into its separate rings. Input: One disassembled ring puzzle. Setting 1-1. Output: One disassembled ring puzzle of different make. Pieces fit together into a separate puzzle. Note: Dang it! I thought I was onto something there. I was going to try engines next if it had worked. One more thing to try, though, Doctor Gold. Test: 914-0224. Name: Dr. Gold Date: May 25, 2018 Total Items 1 Disassembled Interlocking Metal Ring Puzzle Input: 1 Disassembled Ring Puzzle Setting Fine Output: 1 Disassembled Ring Puzzle Object is notably more complex than in input, featuring multiple small pieces engraved with spiraling contours. Object described as somewhat unsettling but still very interesting. Note, well, that didn't work. At least we got something nice out of it. I don't know why it feels so… weird. Maybe it's some kind of low-level cognitohazard. I suppose just to get it looked over. Dr. Gold Test 914-0225 Name Junior Researcher Martin Date May 24, 2018 Total Items Two 300ml beakers filled with 100ml of distilled water, weighing 200 grams each. Input: One beaker of distilled water. Setting 1-1. Output: One bowl of distilled water. Measured mass was 200 grams. Input: One beaker of distilled water. Setting fine. Output: One glass spear decorated in fractal patterns. Water was stored inside spear. Total mass was 200 grams. The glass sphere broke into seven separate pieces when retrieval of water was attempted. Test 914-0226 Name Dr. Alice Forth Date May 28, 2018 Total items One tachyon emission device Functional Output One tachyon emission device Item displayed approximately 700 years of accumulated wear and was entirely non-functional. Setting: Dial rotated back and forth repeatedly until the relevant item was inserted. Input: One tachyon emission device acquired from the Department of Temporal Anomalies following identification of the output. Note: I'm not questioning it, and neither should you. Consider this an informal caution against using SCP-914 to alter Chronotech. Dr. Forth Test 914-0227 Name Dr. Crocker Date May 30, 2018 Total Items One smaller replica of SCP-914, as created on December 17, 2017 Input SCP-914 Replica Setting 1-1 Output A 0.5 m by 0.35 m by 0.15 m copper pad, with 12 4x5 rectangles of 20 pins, roughly resembling a UK electrical plug's earth pin, arranged in four rows of three upon one of its 0.5 m by 0.35 m faces. Nearing one of the long edges of the same face, three 4 mm wooden conduits, each containing a solid copper dowel protrude. While neither SCP-914 nor any of its smaller replicas show a viable pair for either kind of connector. Its design and means of creation imply that both machines may connect to an intermediate device or piece of machinery. Test 914-0228 Name Dr. Crocker Date June 1, 2018 Total Items Three unassembled IKEA Stefan Black Pack Chairs Two IKEA Stefan Assembly Manuals one encouraging note written by Dr. Crocker. Input: One unassembled chair. Setting fine. Output: One assembled chair, having had its components connected together in a random, useless configuration. Input: One unassembled chair. One IKEA Stefan assembly manual. Setting fine. Output: An assembled chair, albeit with the front legs and back of the aforementioned chair switched in places. Its seat has been heavily damaged, seemingly by a hammer or other blunt instrument. Note, we've all been there, Dr. Crocker. Input: 
one unassembled chair, one IKEA Stefan assembly manual, and one post-it note with the sentence, YOU CAN DO IT, written on it in HB pencil by Dr. Crocker. Setting very fine. Output. A 60cm wooden automaton resembling a humanoid figure that shows an obsessive interest in IKEA products and their assembly. While showing extreme enthusiasm towards being allowed to assemble furniture itself, it has failed to make any progress beyond aimless movement of furniture components and tests. Object is thus presumed to be non-sentient. Test 914-0229 Name Dr. Hassid Date June 4, 2018 Total Items Four old papers from the notice board and site cafeteria. Input One logistics tip flyer from the Foundation Logistics Department. Filling every nook and cranny. Tips for efficient transport. Setting course. Output The same flyer as the input. Cut into a continuous ribbon following the Hilbert curve. Seven iterations. Note The flyer seemed unchanged at first, but upon pickup, it was revealed to be cut into a continuous ribbon following the Hilbert space filling curve. Dr. Hassid Input One Ethics Committee Advisory Against Workplace Romance Setting 1-1 Output One Wedding RSVP Between Doctor and Agent With SCP-173 as the officiant, depicted in the background. Of note is that Doctor and Agent were unaware of each other when questioned. Note, the first test stuck with the theme of filling space. I have no idea what the theme here should be, and find the prospect of SCP-173 officiating a wedding to be deeply disturbing. Dr. Hassid Input One pen drawing of SCP-914 on A4 paper. No known author. Setting fine. Output one folded pop-up origami replica of SCP-914, seemingly made by separating the individual layers of fiber in the original sheet of paper. Blue ink accentuates the outer edges of the origami. The object was damaged when attempting to fold the paper fold. Note, now this is more like what I thought it would do. The detailing on this thing is amazing. Too bad it crumpled when we try to close it again. Dr. Hassid Input one printed presentation slide, Funnels and You, by Dr. Gears, signed by Dr. Kondraki. Setting very fine. Output One paper funnel, with an intake diameter of 5 cm, output diameter of 5 mm. Any matter fitting the 5 cm input can be pressed through the funnel with minimal effort, regardless of the material density or composition. Note, my department doesn't have the budget to push a diamond through this thing but I did manage to thin out a 4cm steel bar down to 5mm with my bare hands, Dr. Hassid.